Welcome to Doc Masters 2023. We're here being hosted by the Boulder Hall Energy Haven in Utrecht in the Netherlands. And what a competition it's been so far. Yesterday was the semi-finals and now six men and six women have reached this stage and they get to battle it out for a close place on the podium. Behind me are the boulders awaiting them, but we'll talk about them more in a second because we're not quite beginning the competition yet. This is the preamble where we get to introduce you guys to this incredible gym and the athletes soon will come out onto the stage. So I'm going to leave this arena and head up to where the athletes are in isolation. So if we come this way, and hopefully Sean McCall is up there as well. He is my co-commentator here for this evening. Now it's a little bit busy, so we're going to so try to weave our way through this crowd. My very talented cameraman there is filming and walking, which is far more than I can do, I can barely talk and walk. So if we sneak through here, sorry, sir. Very, very busy here this evening. As you can see, it's absolutely packed, a sold out crowd, 600 plus people are here in the arena. And we're making our way down past the bar area, the chill out where everyone is chilling out, a few beers going down already. And we're making our way upstairs towards the isolation area. Now, walking and talking upstairs is quite difficult. So I'm gonna say goodbye to my cameraman for a couple of seconds and I'll see you in the ISO. Okay, so here we go. This is the curtain protecting everyone's prying eyes from what's going on, but we are privileged enough to be allowed inside. So if we come through the curtain, very different atmosphere from yesterday's semi-finals. Far more quiet, less people, of course. And here is my co-commentator, Mr. Sean McCall. Sean, let's come into the light a little bit more down here. All right, Sean, for those of us who didn't see the semi-final yesterday, yep. Why are you not competing? Because people are desperate to see you climb. Yeah, I know, so uh, I hurt myself last May. I separated my shoulder, shoulder dislocation. I had surgery in September. I'm climbing now. I could have done the scramble format, but there's certain boulders I just don't want to do. With this qualification format, it was like six boulders. Some of them are really hard. I looked at them and I was just like, no, I don't want to do that one. I don't want to do that one. And so we're just waiting. Um, but hopefully I'll be on the World Cup circuit this year. And for now, I get to join you in the live stream. Well, thank you for coming and joining me here for today. Uh, if you didn't see the semi-finals, make sure you do um, watch them on YouTube. So, Sean, if we come down here, because we've been given quite special access to this area, yes. why usually for IFSC competitions are we not allowed in here? So, the uh, again, like isolation is somewhere where they're warming up. They they could be they could be injured. They could do, they could be hiding something. And there should be a safe place for the competitors to have a place where they can, you know, do a warm up. And maybe they have a sore knee and they want to keep it away from the public. Or or there's kind of a big variety of reasons. But that's kind of the main one. They need a space where they're off camera or away from the photographers. And so with the IFSC, well, basically when isolation closes, everyone has to go out. There's no more filmers or. or photographers allowed anymore and so yeah it gives them the space they can do whatever they need to do and then as soon as they're on the mats obviously there's going to be photographers videographers there's everything and that is the show well today we're going to be very respectful of them because obviously they're warming up but we do get a chance to interview some of them so let's make our way down and we do have to be a little bit careful here i don't want to annoy too many people we've got the physio team physio team how you doing hi matt we're doing good you doing good yeah we're doing good have you had any uh, nasty injuries to sort out this weekend or has it all been okay Not well, we, we've had some pains, but not really big injuries, luckily, yeah. That's good. Well, I'll come later on for, uh, you know, commentary neck when I'm leaning forward looking at the screen. <laughs> All right, so Sean, just tell us a bit like what the athletes are doing right now. So we've got two kilter boards, a moon board, campus section, just all about getting ready for that comp, right? Yeah, I was curious. I thought maybe there would be like some stragglers, maybe we could grab one, do an interview, but they're actually all warming up. And so there are six finalists per gender. And so they don't have a lot of time, you know, even as they're climbing, it's going to be like 15 to 25 minutes per boulder. So they don't have a lot of time where they, they can come up here. They're not going to really want to keep warming up. So they need to be warmed up in however 50 minutes and they need to be ready to go for the next two hours. And so they're all warming up. Basically, they start with, yeah, their big muscles. Sometimes they do some ground base. They were actually doing that before. Now they're into the climbing portion. They might do some hanging, a little bit of campusing. Nothing crazy hard, just to like really wake up the muscles. And then, yeah, they'll do some bouldering. The kilter boards are great because then you can actually set some boulders, maybe some boulders that you've already done in the past to warm up. 
but really you're just getting ready for what you expect on the competition. So you're getting ready for jumping moves. You for sure want to make your, sure your fingers are ready. Uh, maybe your shoulders are warmed up. You do some cross throughs. The one thing that, funny enough, could be added, not specifically to here, but is some just volume climbing or like a slab because they're going to be on slabs down there. And so here to to get ready for slabs, they're literally going to be you know along the edge of the wall, just like working on a bit of balance or something. But this is definitely going to get them warm with their, their shoulders, their fingers, the rest of their body, and they're going to come down and they're going to be ready. Okay, well listen, I'm, I'm going to go and uh, annoy someone on down on the mat. As I say annoy, I'm going to very journalistically interview someone. Uh, let, let's come down here t to Team Canada. Hey guys, how you doing? Alana, I know you're warming up. Congratulations on making finals. Obviously in good form. Are you ready for a show tonight? Yeah, I'm really excited to see what the setters have in store for us. I think. It's going to be, whatever it's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting to watch. It's going to be a party. Well, thank you very much. I'll leave you to it. Good luck with the rest of the competition. Hope it goes well. Now, I'm really interested to speak to Lisa. Lisa is down there uh, on the kilter board. She's from the Netherlands, and she had an incredible semi-final. Four flashes out of four. Caught everyone by surprise. So I'm going to wait for her to come down. I'm going to nab her for a quick chat, because it's very important that we talk to her. So let's walk our way over here. Lisa, hello. hello. I know you're warming up. Yeah. Just quickly, four flashes, yeah. four boulders last night. Incredible performance from you. Thanks. I mean, just you, you must be in good form. You just, is this year your year? I hope so, but I hope there will be more greater years than this year because I'm still 18, so. Yeah. I'll uh, more. And I was looking at your stats. We haven't really seen you. You've done World Cups, some World Cups. Uh, one. Yeah. Only one. Next year, are you going to hit the season properly, or what's your plan? Yeah, I will do the European Cups and Youth Cups, probably that, and maybe World Cup, but we'll see how it goes. Well, look, best of luck. I know you've got a huge crowd cheering for you. Thanks. Good luck. All right, I'm going to try to grab one more person at least. I'll tell you who I would like is Sergio here. But well, actually, I'll tell you what, Sam, how you doing, man? Sam. First of all, love watching you in World Cups. What an incredible year you had last year. Why are these kind of competitions important for you as athletes before the World Cup season kind of kicks off? Mm, I would say it's a, it's, it's a very good training uh, and uh, it's nice going out of what I do usually in my training every day. So I enjoyed uh, doing a few competitions before and then now and then go back to training before World Cups. Man. Well, World Cup start uh, end of April, so mate, best of luck with that. Good luck tonight. Hope it goes well. See you later, Sam. Right. Oh, there. Hey, Astasha, how you doing? How's things? Uh, qualified in second position. How are you feeling? How's the fingers? How's the body? I wish it was better. <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's fine. Uh, I did like a long warm up, like slow, easy, because I knew I might need more time to get activated. Uh, so now it feels much, much better. Um, skin is, yeah, some, it's mostly good. I'm taped for prevention a bit because yesterday when warming up for semis, I lost quite a lot of skin on Kilterboard. So I don't want to do that again. So I'm trying to climb less on it <laughs> today. Uh, yeah. It's okay. Well, best of luck. And if you haven't seen it, watch the Epic TV movie with Stasha climbing 8B plus in font. It's really good. It's fantastic. Fantastic. There you go. Good luck with the competition, Stasha. Right, let's go grab Sean for a last little debrief here before we head to the mats. All right, Sean, so looking at everyone, I hate to talk about favourites before we start off here, but Lisa, I mean, we chatted about her four flashes out of four. And then also Mark Brand from the Netherlands qualifying in first position for this final. Two local heroes, that's going to be exciting to watch. Oh, it's going to be super exciting. And obviously we saw them climb in the semifinals. They have a ranking. And it's funny because they will climb obviously reversed. So sixth place will come out first. And we get to see, you know, how they deal with that. There's a little bit of pressure. They're, 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 you know, we'll say they're not favorited, but after the semifinals, they are small favorites because they would have won the competition had that be the finals. So it's always hard coming out last. You know, you had the best best semifinals of all the competitors, you know in your mind you're just like, I just need to repeat what I did last night and then I'll come away with a win. And it's all about managing that, so it usually come, turns out to be really exciting. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, I'm excited by the atmosphere. Can, do we know the time, Sure. Have you got the time on you? It is 6.25. 6.25, okay. So what is that? That means that observation is in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, give, well, yeah, we'll give them a chance to warm up. We can probably eventually head back to the studio, maybe answer some questions. Um, did you... Did you 
interview everyone or it's, it's, it's really hard it's really hard to interview everyone because like as like, we came in here they're all warming up they're all they're all busy and like I know as a competitor I'm doing my thing like if someone comes and asks me a few questions it's totally fine but like I'm here to warm up like yeah, yeah. like all that this stuff's supposed to be after but like it is really cool that we're in here giving a little sneak peek of how they warm up and then we'll obviously see them competing in a little bit well, I'll tell you what we'll do. For a couple of minutes, maybe we film a bit of their warm-up. We'll keep quiet so you guys can enjoy what they're doing. Uh, we'll occasionally come back, and then we'll check in with you in about five minutes. Uh, and then we'll probably head down to the mats and look at some boulder problems, because that's why we're here anyway. So we'll see you guys in a couple of seconds. side and of course the moon board Sergio is uh, doing some Aret style moves on the left and you can see Sam there with his characteristic campusing method Sam Abazu is seriously one to watch but there's some big names here in this final and of course that's what an international competition like this is all about because this is the first time that they get to test what kind of form they're in and it's the first time that we get to see them as well because Last World Cup, Morioka in Japan, feels like a long time ago. Obviously, during that off-season, they've been training, they've been practicing, they've been mentally preparing, as well as physically for the season ahead. And it's a chance for all of us just to get excited for the upcoming competitions. Yenya down the end from Ukraine. She just made it into the finals. And it was a close thing for the women especially. Chloe Collier got knocked out due to attempts to zone, which has got to be one of the harshest ways to, to, to exit a competition like that. Especially that, that top after the buzzer too. It's heartbreaking. Now, you were the maths genius last night working it all out. I know there was some uh, annoyance about uh, the score being displayed. We've had a chat. Hopefully that we'll have more scores in the finals. Four boulders, we'll explain the rules when we go on, but the basic aim of the game, if people don't know bouldering, is to get from the bottom to the top, right? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna have a, a start position again. There's gonna be four points, two hands, two feet, in a specific starting position. Somewhere in the middle of the boulder, there's gonna be a zone. It gives you kind of partial points, tie-breaking points, and then the goal is to get to the top of the boulder and control that top hold with two hands. There's four boulders. A perfect score would be four tops, so you really top every boulder. An ideal score would you top it on the first try. Unlikely to happen today, but we will see. I mean, even unlikely, just like, it's crazy when we do see it. But uh, yeah, you want to get to the top of those boulders um, in a little amount of tries, and if you can't get the top, you just want to get that zone. Well, there we go. That's the basics of the rules. All of this will become clear when we've got pictures on screen, don't worry. So last couple of seconds, I'm just going to grab Sergio while he's sitting down. Sergio, mate, I'm so sorry to bother you, but you are amazing to me because last time I saw you, you were in Munich. Yeah. You were root setting for the IFSC. Why do you come back and do these competitions every now and again? Is it just to sort of like keep yourself within that athlete mindset? Yeah, I mean, I really enjoy competition from, yeah, when I was younger, I was doing the World Cups also. And then a few years ago, I changed into root setting. But I still enjoy a lot the feeling I have in the competition and how I climb in the comp. And it's nice to, also for my work, it helps a bit to be connected with the competition and yeah, check with the athletes and everything. And I came also to play and it's so fun, yeah. And yeah, it turns to be really okay, yeah. Because it is different, because sometimes I think people think it's root setters versus athletes and there's that mentality. But a lot of root setters are climbers, top level climbers. Yeah, yeah in my opinion, what you say, I really agree that some people think that there's a like, competition between root setters and climbers. And in my point of view, it's more like mm, we, we have the same goal also with the judges to have the best competition ever. And I really would like that the athletes can perform the best in my boulders. So I think it's, yeah, to have this connection between everyone is, is cool for the competitions also. But this time I came most for me, just for fun and to enjoy, yeah. Well, look, keep having fun because you're doing amazingly. We're all rooting for you. You're getting fun, yeah, yeah. One more round. One more round and then we all get a beer and chill out. Yeah. Best of luck for tonight. Hope Thank it goes you. well. All right, so that was Sergio. We're doing well with these interviews here. I'm not sure who else we can really get hold of. And in fact, I think we have to make our way down to the wall. So, Sean, we're going to go and look at the boulders.
have you had a chance to see any of the final boulders yet? I took I took one picture, kind of like from the side. Saw the very first female boulder. Kind of got a glimpse of them, but I'm excited to go look. Maybe during previews or now or whenever we have the chance, just to kind of figure out what we're going to be what we're going to be seeing. Okay, well let's head down there. Leave these guys to it. Uh, and we'll see you down on the mat. Sander Jansma, there he is, we have a champion, oh okay, Lala, Lala, and he met Kieran Hinkle and Meijer, and you will hear what Holden is, so you know that too, and on number one with 449 points, Stijn van Utteren. Stijn. Ja, dat is ook een loopje van iemand die hard heeft geklommen vandaag. Geef hem een hartelijk applaus. Stijn. Ja, fantastische prijzen van mijn sportieve. Geniet ervan. Dank jullie wel. En dan uh, komt eigenlijk ook wel een heel leuk onderdeeltje. Julia Brek de Bak. Ja, we gaan... Uh, Kijk eens. Want uh, hardklimmen is niet het enige wat je een presentje op kan leveren. Wat er ook nog kan gebeuren, is dat je knetter veel geluk hebt. So what also can happen is that you are very damn lucky. So Chok, who is the first lucky person with our telco? Kira van Rijn. Kira Schultz! Right, we're back on the mats. And as you can see, there's a prize-giving ceremony underway. And that's because the entire Boulder Hall has been turned into a giant competition this weekend. As well as the pro boulders, there are recreational boulders. I tried out a few of them. Did quite well until I hit that pro level and then I just fell off everything immediately. But for those better than me, they are winning a load of prizes. And, and there's a bouldering pad stacked up, there's chalk. Always wanted to be on the top spot of the podium, but no one's ever let me stand up there. And in fact, let's just grab a member of crowd, shall we, while we're standing here. There's a gentleman here with a cat. Hello, sir. How you doing? Uh, what's your name? And do you live here? I live in Amsterdam, but different city, but same country. And why have you come tonight? Which athletes are you excited to see climb? Um, I've got to be fair. I'm, I'm more preferring to West Russia. Um, for the men, I've got to be, I've got to be go for my hometown. I'm gonna go for Mark Brandt. Yeah, it's, it's basically the favourites, I'm guessing, but still, yeah. Well, look, you enjoy the competition. I'm gonna go and grab someone else who's looking at me. Oh, uh, let's, let's let's go down here a bit, shall we? Yannick uh, Hello, how you doing? I'm just gonna come and talk to you because you looked at me and you didn't frown, so I feel like you'll want to talk to. You. I've been asking people which athletes are you looking forward to watching climb here this evening. Uh, Stasha at this point, definitely, yeah. Stasha seems to be a big favourite of a lot of people. What about her makes you want to watch her climb? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, I think it's the smiles. She's very cheerful. If she comes off the wall, if it's, yeah. She's kind of, I love the fact that when Stash is angry, you know she's angry. Yeah, exactly. Very expressive. That's, I guess she's to kind of live with her, I think. Yeah. A lot of life. You enjoy the competition. Have fun. Uh, see you later. Right, is there anyone else we can nab? I don't know. Let's, let's, we'll stick with the front row down here. Hello, how you doing? My name's Matt. Nice to meet you. You got a front row spot here. How did you manage that? Because everyone was stacking up. There were three free seats, and then they got more seats, and they placed them next to the three free seats. You got to stand up for yourself. <laughs> stand up for yourself or get lucky with the seats, either way. Well, look, you've got the best seats in the house. Enjoy the comp. Hope it goes well. OK, well, we're a couple of minutes off here now. We've got, uh, oh, sorry, chalk bags being given out there on the main stage. Some of our photographers waiting patiently. In fact, let's go and chat to one of our photographers, shall we? If you, if you come this way. I'm going to put you on camera. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> Tell us your name and what you're here. Obviously taking photos here this evening. I'm uh, Sietse van Sloot and I'm here to take pictures of the, the whole event. So um, we'll be running around. I uh, hope I will not be too much in the live stream, but I try to be. Uh, You're in it right now. I mean, this is fame all around the world. Usually in cockpit. <laughs> if people want to see your photos, where can they find them? Shout out your Instagram or something. Uh, they will probably be shared by uh, the, the socials of uh, Energy Haven, Boulder Gym. 
or on my own socials. So it's uh, just a bit of a challenge to find my name and the right spelling. But hey, <laughs> it's not supposed to be easy. And what are the challenges of taking photos in this environment? Because we've got strange lighting, obviously a big crowd. It's very busy in here. Is it difficult to get that shot? There's so much going on at the same time. And uh, it's very busy in here, in front. So uh, mostly probably spent on top of the wall. But uh, if you're on top of the wall, it's really hard to keep track of what's going on. So I'm not sure yet what I'll do. I speak to lots of photographers and they tell me that after a competition finishes, they usually have no idea who's won, who's come last. Because all you see is that, that eyepiece. I, I really have to look at the score because I, I cannot keep track of who's winning. I usually don't even know which photos I have after the fact. So it's always a surprise. <laughs> well, listen, I love your photos. You're a talented man. Uh, good luck with the competition. Hope it goes well this evening. Thanks, man. OK, well, the crowd, as you can see, are uh, getting thrown various pieces of climbing equipment. Uh, we're about to get a T-shirt lobbed over there. I'm pretty sure I can't run into the crowd and get a freebie, but I would quite like to at this point. Let's, let's just grab, should we grab one more audience member? So let's come down here. How are you doing? Um, I've, I'm speaking to you because you're wearing the brightest yellow in the entire climbing wall. You're literally standing out. Was that a deliberate thing, or uh, is this just your biking to work? Yeah, this is my biking outfit. I'm, I was just pretty cold, and I thought, if I'm, I'm sitting so close by, then the lights will go on, and then I'll, I won't need it anymore. But yeah, I'm doing well. I just... well you're going to show up on every live stream camera. You're going to be the star. Yeah, well, it, was, it was not planned, but yeah. I'll... I'll believe you, I'll believe you. And, and where have you guys come from today? Have you come far or do you live in a local city? Well, from Utrecht, from the city, yeah. And why should people, because like, for me, when I came to the Netherlands, I went to Amsterdam, I left Amsterdam and that was about it. That's all I kind of traveled around, but there's so much to this country. And in terms of climbing, so many good climbing walls here. Yeah, but outdoors, not so much. <laughs> Indoors, yes. <laughs> it is a little bit flat here in the Netherlands, I will admit. But you guys can drive to Font in a couple of hours. Or Belgium, Freer, Berdorf, Ettringen. Actually, we're in a really good spot. I mean, there's nothing in the Netherlands, but around here, a lot of good spots, really good spots. Yeah. It's like international travel to get to a climbing. It's, you know. If you live in the middle of the US, you might have to drive five hours somewhere as well, right? So, uh, yeah. And, and they don't think that's very far at all, so yeah. All right, mate, well, look, enjoy the competition. Sorry for annoying you. Have a good one. OK, the lights have dimmed, which means I've got to go and find Sean because we're about to move on to stage two of tonight's entertainment for you. The athletes will get introduced in a couple of minutes, and at that point, we'll then get to chat about some of the boulders. And whilst the athletes are being introduced, we'll be quiet so you can hear the MC. So let's come down out of the way towards the edge of the wall. Luckily, my cameraman's got a light it's illuminating me, thank goodness, because it has dropped into blackness here. Now, I tell you what, this is a team I want to talk to. Hello, brushes. Right, you guys have not had enough attention, frankly, ever. Brushing has got to be one of the hardest jobs out there, because not only have you got to physically work, but if you get it wrong, the athletes are going to shout at you. You can only lose. What, 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 are the, what are the... Tell me the difficulties of being a professional, and you are a professional, yes, brusher. Professional. Well, uh, there are a lot of difficulties. One of them is finding the right holds, knowing where to brush, having a very good coordination with your brushing partner, a good connection with the climbers as well. I think these are all very different aspects of the brushing job. Okay, thank you. For these guys, do you do any specific training to get ready for brushing? I'm thinking like really vigorous teeth cleaning, maybe cleaning the car. There's, there's surely something you can do to build up those muscles. I should have thought about that before. Maybe I will train for next year by brush my teeth. It's a big toothbrush though. Yeah, very big. Maybe for horses. <laughs> That's an idea I hadn't had. Horses, elephants, we could just increase the size of the animal depending on how big the muscles want to go. Giraffes for the big one. That's true. Giraffes as well. Uh, and you guys, uh, is this your first time professionally brushing or are you experienced professional brushes? This is our first time, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, first time as well. Well, are you a little bit nervous here? Because, yeah. I mean, imagine, for example, you go towards the wall to brush, you trip, you slip, you poke Stasha with one of the brushes. I mean, it all could go terribly wrong. And now I've put that thought into your head, yes, it's even more scary. Uh, yes, exactly. That's, yeah, thank you. Thank you for doing that. 
Well, look, guys, you play such an important role in this competition. No one ever thanks you, so thank you so, so much for all the work you guys do. Without you, the athletes will be falling off and looking very silly, so thank you very much. Thank you for thanking us. Ah, no, always, thank you. See you later, guys. Right. I think we're getting quite close. There's a clock showing 3 minutes 42 kicking down. The audience are here. The stage is set. And if you can look at this wall behind me, if you can see it in the darkness, this is the comp wall here at the Boulder Hall Energy Haven. And it's a pretty unique comp wall. It's got a big cave feature down at the end of the wall, some arets, some corners, a little bit of slabby section down on the left. And Sean, I mean, you must have seen many, many comp walls in your time. I was just saying, this is a bit of a unique one. <laughs> it's a little bit unique, but only because it's a little bit shorter just in certain spots. But like when you see the lines, they, they work really well. And then also when we go through the observation, we'll be able to explain, because some of them are actually very close. And actually they're going to remove some of the holds for when, after the men and women climb. So basically like here, one and three are actually quite close together. So when they climb this first boulder, they're going to take off some of the holds on number three. And they're going to explain that during the observation. By the time we get to boulder three, they're going to have put on or they'll have taken off the other holds and put on the holds for number three. So there's, there'll be like a, a two to five minute gap at the start of each round and the root setters will kind of just fix the boulders. Now you said something really interesting last night, which was that you like to do some root setting in the same way as root setters sometimes like to do climbing because it kind of puts you in the different camp. So tell me about your root setting. Is that something you do regularly or just every now and again? So yeah, I've, I've almost always root set and it was because my coaches when I was young were basically said, no, you need to root set because you need to understand what the root setter is thinking or like when you're climbing, why was there a foothold there? So when you root set and you literally do a move, you're like, oh, naturally I would just put a foot right there. Then if you want to be, if you want the root to be weird, you put it somewhere else. But if you want it to be very natural, you put it like exactly there. And it, it really opens your mind about like how to climb. And then a little bit of a double-edged sword, because sometimes I get too into, oh, this is what the root setters wanted, instead of just climbing the boulder as I see fit. So it is really good to do both, but I do think that root setting really helps being a good competitor. And how frustrating is it, as a root setter, when an athlete comes in and does something completely different from what you intended and your beautiful boulder gets, well, destroyed? It, it depends if the way that they did it was a lot harder or a lot easier. If they choose some crazy method and you're like, yeah, but if they did it the way I said it, it would have been even easier. You, you actually don't really care. But when they find a sequence that like really breaks yours and you're like, oh, I didn't think of that or I didn't think of spanning it or I didn't think of putting my foot there, it's like, oh, okay. I, I should have been better as a root setter because you shouldn't be able to break the boulders, at least not very easily. Okay. And, and I always think it's worth explaining because sometimes you see on TV and these holds look quite big, they look quite good, but often the texture is different and they are just simply hard to hold onto. Yeah, it's all about like the angle of the walls. Sometimes you grab like a jug, a huge hold, but because it's on a steep or slightly awkward or you can't generate the momentum because it's facing a certain way. so. It's kind of cool. They come up with these like basically like pieces of art and you look at them you're like, "Oh, they should totally be able to jump from here to here." But in reality, you can't. And so yesterday, I didn't get a chance to look at the boulders too too closely. And so here, I've already had a little bit of a chance to look at it. Obviously, we're going to have the presentation, they're going to have the observation. So hopefully, we're going to be able to stand behind them or at least, you know, maybe 10 or 20 feet away, look at these boulders really quickly before we go back up into the booth. Okay, well, it's time for the athletes to be announced to the audience, and we're going to be quiet for a little bit and let the MCs do the work. So we'll be back after the introduction of the athletes to talk through some of the boulders. Hope you've enjoyed this part of the show, and we'll see you in a bit. zelf voorstellen, want dat is natuurlijk veel minder belangrijk, willen we jullie eerst voorstellen aan onze fantastische finalisten. Chong? Ik ben geen finalist, maar uh, nee, maar jij moet ze met voorstellen. de dames. Ja, goed. Mijn naam is Chongo. Ik ben jullie speaker vanavond, samen met de uh, zus. Dus uh, wij gaan jullie begeleiden door de finale heen. Dus uh, als jullie willen klappen, doe dat. Als jullie willen aanmoedigen, doe dat ook vooral. Dus we hebben jullie hard nodig. En, uh, Laten we er een mooie show van maken. Chong, wie is onze eerste vrouwelijke atlete vanavond? Jenja Kaspakova. All the way from Ukraine. En dan all the way from 
Utrecht. Ja, zeker Jens de Lauw. Jens, uit ons eigen stadzie. Kom lekker hier staan, Jens. Kom hier naartoe. Dan heb ik voor jou een plekje. En met de dames, all the way from Canada, Alana Jip. En uit Spanje, Sergio Vardasco. En from Italy we have Camilla Moroni. En een stukje uit ons zuiden, onze onderbuurtjes, Hannes van Duizen. Uit België. Welkom ook aan u, Hannes. En onze eigen klimster vandaag in de finale, Lin van der Meer. En uit Frankrijk, Sam Avezou. Sam, Sam Avezou. Au. En van Serbië, Stasja Geo. En onze best gekwalificeerde heer, knalhard door de halve finale heen, Mark Brandt. We zijn bij de heren nog even vergeten, oh. Nimrod. Oh, excuses, excuses, excuses. Op de nummer drie, Nimrod Marcus. Nimrod Marcus. Laten we het goed maken met een extra hard applaus. I'm so sorry, Nimrod. You are most welcome here at the number three. Thanks so much. En de laatste dames, als best gekwalificeerd voor vandaag, Lisa Klem. En dit zijn jullie finalisten voor vanavond. We gaan zo uh, naar het eerste stukje van eigenlijk al de wedstrijd kijken. En dat is het inlezen. Die timer die jullie zien staan aan de buitenkanten, die gaat aflopen. En dat is de tijd die onze atleten krijgen om de bolders één voor één te bekijken. Dat is ook de tijd die jullie kunnen nemen om je te bedenken. How the hell would I climb that? So they have two minutes per boulder for observation. And when the time starts, you will go to the first bowler and you can ask questions from the, uh, to the jury if you have any. So, let's start. Give them one heartwarming applause. Our athletes, our finalists for Dogmasters 2013. 23. Women's boulder number one, starting off with a slab. Sean, tell me your thoughts about this. It looks hard. Well, it's a slab. Okay, so it's going to be balancy. It's going to be tricky. Obviously, you have to start on the far left. I don't think it's going to be a face out start. I think you're going to have to do a little shuffle, get in the corner, stop, relax, breathe, then a little jump to the zone. And then once you get that, that one, the second last hold, I think it's done. But You know, we'll see. If someone gets that second last hold and doesn't do the last move, that was my bad. But uh, yeah, I think it's just going to be getting to the zone, getting off the zone, and the last move is going to be pretty easy. Okay, well, we've only got a minute. So let's go down to the men's boulder number one. Now, instead of a slab, we're starting on a big overhang over there. So a physical start for the men. Yeah, so this one, uh, obviously, they're going to take out these blue holes, or that's not part of the boulder, but it's going to be some sort of physical, maybe a 360. We always hope for a 360. Uh, The last move is going to be hard because I think also they're going to take out those volumes over on the right over there. But yeah, physical boulder, 360, maybe a bit of campusing uh, to really kind of get the boys going. And there's a mono in there, which you don't see often in competition. Yeah, that's uh, that's a little little dirty. I'm gonna, I, uh, hopefully they don't have to move off it. It might just be one of those ones where they have to get a toe hook and they have to shuffle their hands. They might have to, I don't know. I know it too. It's, it's like it's actually two pads at least. So it's not crazy, but 
I don't know. Not a huge fan of it. We'll see what no, the Rutella has had. Especially off the bat as well, because they have warmed up. And it's one of those monos that if you turn that hold, it would be quite a sinker. But they've kind of flipped it. It's almost like an undercling mono. Yeah, we'll see. Like, obviously, we hope there's no injuries. Um, and we just hope the boulder goes. All right, so let's move on with the athletes as they run across the stage. If we come up here, we'll stick with the women once more. So, from slab to another overhang. And this feels like a long boulder, this one. Yeah, so I didn't, I didn't get a good chance to look at someone yet, and just looking at it right now, it looks confusing. There's no feet, there's just the volumes and the holds. So again, there's gonna be some toe hooks. Eventually, you're gonna get kind of around, and before you pull this lip, I think you're gonna have your feet way out left. Once you get the zone, I think you're gonna have to go all the way back out right, and I think it finishes in a weird, like, press, and they're definitely gonna be using their flexibility. They're actually gonna finish really high, and obviously the top of the wall is out, so it's uh, going to be maybe a spicy finish again. I love a spicy finish. OK, and then down to the men's, which is all the way down here. Uh, OK, the men, it's coordination time. And I know you guys have got opinions about running jumps, but who cares? It's there anyway. They have to run. Yeah, OK, so this one looks cool. Obviously, the start is basic, but the foothold is really bad. So that's interesting, because then they have to jump. Now, looking at them previewing it, they could actually stop in the corner but most of them will probably end up getting up, jumping to that one, and then jumping and there would be a big swing. I actually think they should stop in the corner now that we're looking at it with people there, but uh, I don't want to raise my voice too loud. I don't want them to hear me. You know, that's giving away some pretty important beta. And a boulder like this is always quite a weird one because it's some of its muscle memory, you know, it takes a couple of goes sometimes. Yeah, exactly. And and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you see one of them try the full method and then, you know, maybe it works and maybe they keep trying it or they go and they do that the method where they stop. OK, well, we're being ushered off the mats here, so we're going to come down onto this concrete bit uh, because that's two of the boulders done. And then we move on to um, women's... So let's, let's do the women's while it's there. So the athletes all move down. And maybe, Sean, if we, we can stand here with it behind... Yeah, I think we can go here. So the women's one, it's kind of crammed in. Is this one of the ones where they might remove holds, or is this staying where it is? So this one, I actually thought it was a, a men's boulder, because it looked hard. And then I looked at the top, and it said, oh, F3. And I'm like, oh, it's a female boulder. And I don't know if it's just because like my size, or maybe they'll be stretched out, and I thought it was a comfortable boulder. But it starts with a hard toe hook, and you basically get this crimp, and then you have to almost just kind of campus out. And then they'll take out a few of the holds out left with the mono for the, for the men's first boulder. And then just, yeah, some physical moves. There's obviously a small foot that they'll get high and left. We'll, we'll talk about that later on the stream. And then the last move is, I think it's set to be a go again. But again, like you, you're not seeing the boulder. But again, it's a physical boulder. Remember we were talking about the boulder two or boulder three are usually the harder boulders. They were just in that roof here. It's only, I don't know, guess 20 degrees overhanging, but it's still going to be a physical boulder. And I'm excited to see the last one. Hopefully it almost eases off a little bit because they're going to be tired by then. All right, and then looking at the men's, and what got me with the men's, if you can see it, just the blue one behind me, is the starting position. Those stacked volumes create almost a vertical surface, but not quite. Difficult just to get established on the thing. Yeah, again, this bowler, I saw it from the left to start, and I assumed that there were going to be more holds to start on, and if, lo and behold, I got it on the right, I was like, oh, no, it's actually impossible. And so I'm sure that the root setters specifically played balancing those boulders where they, you know, they'd put three, try to start it. No, it's still impossible. Put four, try to start it. Mm, it's possible. And I think they settled on four. So they stacked four. And again, it's a technical boulder. I don't expect it to be too physical, but maybe a little bit of learning for the first couple of moves. And then uh, it's not going to be hard to match the last hold. So if you get up there, they're going to be fishing, finishing the boulder. What gets me is the move into the zone area, the two volumes. So we sort of going to have an elevated all-star press or, or what? Yeah, do you think? it'll definitely be a the double, but I think it'll start just by one hand, and then they'll be getting their foot up and left to that little foothold. OK, right, well, final boulder. Uh, let's move down. And of course, at this stage, the athletes are going to be pretty tired. Remember, they had the semi-finals earlier on yesterday. They have regrown some skin, but it's going to be difficult. And if we look at this final boulder for the women, uh, starting really high up the wall, and then they have to go down. Yeah, so it's uh, it's funny. It's I, I hesitate to call it a downwards jump because they're actually not allowed in comps. But then we have boulders like this where you're swinging. You're technically going down a little bit, but you're landing on your feet and you're catching something or you're jumping right away. So it's hard. Uh, a long time ago, we, we got rid of downward jumps because they were actually jumping down and catching with our arms. This is, 
in my opinion, not a downwards jump because it's using your legs, but maybe it needs a, to be clarified in the IFSC. But anyways, it's a slightly, slightly downwards motion jump. And uh, it's surprising because I actually think that you might, you'll probably stop on the zone, but you could actually maybe carry through and jump all the way to the next one, but then you wouldn't be stopping on the zone. So I feel like they will stop. Uh, and then uh, a little bit of a spicy top. They do have a foot for that. They'll get their heel in, they'll sink on their heel. But again, I'm not really sure that one works. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. That's the women's final, and then finally, finally, the men's final boulder. And we'll just stand here so you can see it. This looks like an expensive boulder problem. Yeah, it's funny. Remember, I was just saying that I hope the fourth one eases off a little bit because oh, maybe that was the woman. So, <laughs> anyways, this one looks hard. And so, yeah, a bunch of unit holds, a bunch of dual techs. It's powerful. It's in the steep part. So, yeah, the men's third ball was that blue one. So maybe they're saying, okay, they're going to save a bit of their strength and then they're going to really nail them on this last boulder because it's physical. There's going to be, again, a little bit of campusing moves. There's a bunch of toe hooks. Uh, it's going to be one of those boulders where you're probably not going to try it more than four times unless you fall off the first move. But it's going to be exciting. It's a, it's a beautiful boulder. So, yeah, excited for this one too. Awesome. Well, my favorite moment is the athletes getting ushered off the stage, and that's our cue to get off the stage as well. Head up to the commentary box where we will be bringing you all of the action from this evening. Have a quick cup of tea, and we'll see you up there in a couple of seconds. <laughs> Je ziet nu in één keer dat alles wordt veranderd. Dat is natuurlijk een verrassing wat ze straks krijgen. Wacht, wordt alles veranderd, joh? Nee, 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 grapje. Dus uh, ze maken nu ruimte voor de boulders. Hè? Dus uh, ze halen een aantal modules weg. Want uh, ze willen natuurlijk alle ruimte hebben voor uh, de eerste boulder. En uh, straks, als de eerste boulder voorbij is, dan uh, worden al die uh, gepen weer teruggeschroefd waar ze zaten. Op uh, een wedstrijd van dit formaat komen er ook internationale hoedzetters. Ja, wat voor team hebben we nou eigenlijk? Hoeveel mensen hebben nou deze bolders gebouwd? Er zijn er zes bij betrokken. En dat is naast de mensen die de recreational bolders hebben gebouwd. We hebben hoedzetters uit Frankrijk, Canada, Polen. En natuurlijk onze eigen Jesse van der Werf, hoofdbouwer van Energiehaven. Ja, ja, dat mag ook best wel een klein hoerhoertje krijgen. Ja. En dan zou hij zelf niet zo snel om vragen, maar hij heeft het wel verdiend. Ja, en onder leiding van Jesse hebben we natuurlijk uh, Caleb Thomas uit Canada, Olga Nimic van Polen, Melis Agrapar uit Frankrijk. Ja, zij heeft eerder hier in de finale gestaan, hè? wist je dat? En die is nu, heeft nu meegeholpen met het bouwen. En uh, naast uh, deze Fransen heeft uh, Fred. Sharon uit Canada ook meegeholpen aan het bouwen. En als laatste Romain Cabassu uit Frankrijk. Was dat die man die net op die ladder stond? Ja, die komt hier constant langs. Dus, uh... Hij is eigenlijk niet weg te houden van de mat, hè? Iedereen moet van de mat af. We hebben alle ruimte nodig voor de klimmers. Dus, uh... Wij zien jullie zo. Right, ladies and gentlemen, well, we're back in the commentary box. And hello to everyone who's on YouTube leaving us some comments. Lovely to see you. Do let us know where in the world you're watching us from and if you're excited. And if you've got any questions for Sean, uh, he's one of the best climbers in the world, an Olympian. This is a great opportunity for you guys to ask him any questions. Okay, Sean, so the space has been cleared now. Uh, the mm -hmm. athletes are waiting backstage. Talk to me about what's going through their head in these moments just before they compete. So. The thing to remember is they just went through their observations. They've had an opportunity to look at each boulder for two minutes in a group. So usually they're trying to figure out what they're going to do on each boulder. And so they are thinking about all four boulders. And then in the last moment, basically, they're trying to focus obviously on the first boulder. But right now, because it's still, you know, what, uh, five, five, ten minutes before we start, they're going to they're gonna try to think about every boulder. So they're going through the, okay, boulder number. It's funny because I just looked at eight boulders. so. I remember the women's boulder really nicely. So it's a, obviously it's a white boulder, starts on an undercling, there's two feet, a little bit of a jump, there's two more feet. I think they're actually gonna stop in that corner, they're gonna look for the zone, then they're gonna have to jump for the zone, maybe a front flag, back flag, and stop. Then I think the top move jump is, I think it's okay, and then an easy move to the top. And the last move actually looks really easy. And so I wanna be wrong, I didn't look to see how deep it was, if it was an actual jug, but 
I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know. And then uh, let's see, women's number two was, okay, well they had that red one in the corner. Yeah, I, I'm, but like <laughs> mentally, so they've warmed up, they've come on stage, they've got all the audience there, they're hyped. Do you then have to sort of like calm down a little bit? Uh, it depends, it depends where you are. Uh, some people get, they, they finish their observation and yeah, they're like, they're not like jittery, but like very excited. And some people finish their observation and they're just like, they're ready. And again, this is just over like many, many competitions, but usually you have a good or bad feeling mm -hmm. after seeing the boulders. You're like, oh, I can do all these boulders or oh, I'm going to have a hard time with one and three. So if you think you can do all the boulders, that's the mentality you want to be in. And if you think, oh, I'm going to have trouble with one and three, you need to pick why one and three are going to be hard. So you're ready to, you're ready to um, basically problem solve mm -hmm. to get through those hard boulders because you know two and four are going to be your stuff. Okay, so you can sort of pick the ones and think, you know, that might not be mine. Get through it. I won't worry, I'll get through it. And then those ones. But of course, everything can change when you're out there. And I, totally. I've talked to athletes and they're like, oh, I just thought it was bad for me, that boulder. And it just worked out. So yeah. anything can happen. Anything can happen, yeah. The beauty of competition. All right, guys. Well, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, there's a live chat going on right now. Sean is here to answer your questions. So anything you want to know about being a pro athlete, a pro root setter, a pro Canadian, just let him know. I'm sure he can answer. Uh, and hello to everyone. Men and women going first, someone's asking. Good question. Climbing at the same time. Same right? time, I believe, yeah. Okay. And that's different because usually in IFSC comps we have the women and men. Yeah, they separated it out now. But uh, it's funny because a lot of the, well, most people actually I talk to, they prefer it this way. Yeah. Watching at the same time, it's always action. So. I, I agree with you as well. And also there's that weird thing where I forget sometimes what I've just watched. Yeah. So the women can compete, then the men can be all vice versa. And then I've got to write a script at the end of the day and I can't remember what on earth happened in the first final. Yeah, yeah it's hard. So I'm quite pleased about this. Uh, Harris Michael Mikhail says, how is the athlete's comp's nerve between this comp and official IFSC one? Good question, because it is a different atmosphere here. Yeah, so I mean, the goal actually when you're competing in something like this is to simulate a World Cup. So the competitors here should pretend like they're in a World Cup final. It's hard because in a World Cup final, it, the, the stakes are higher. It's just it's just harder in general. But basically, yeah, every time you're in a final, you have to. Your goal is to go and compete at the World Cup stage. You try to pretend that this is the World Cup final. It doesn't matter here who you're competing against. You should think, okay, I'm here to climb my best. Whatever I do, me against all the boulders. Hopefully, I can do all these boulders because in a World Cup, I need to do boulders. Now, a question that everyone hates to answer, but everyone loves to talk about: grades of the boulder. This is difficult because it's it's they've got four minutes to do it. It's not as straightforward as just seven A, seven B, seven C, is it? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, there will be a grade associated with it, but it's it's hard because I can set a 7A boulder that most World Cup climbers probably can't get in five minutes. Okay. I can probably set an 8C boulder that they also can't get in five minutes. It's never one or the other. It's usually like in a range of boulders, but then there's kind of like these three elements. And now that I've said three, I'll probably just mess them up. But there's like the difficulty, so like how powerful they are. There's the complexity, mm -hmm. and then there's the risk factor. So generally those are the three. And as you increase all three, the boulder problem may not be getting much harder in grading, but if you have a crazy coordination where there's three things you have to hit with a specific foot in every position, or you just lose it and then you can't get to that next hold, that hold, that, that boulder might be 7A. And when you get it, it just feels like this perfectly natural flow, but it's a 7A boulder. You can also set, you know, just crazy crimps up like a 30 degree wall and it's like 8A plus boulder, but every World Cup climber just flashes it because they can just climb on crimps. So again, somewhere in the middle, but using those three elements. I always think it's worth, if you're watching this, go to your local gym, pick a boulder that's kind of like near your maximum and put a time limit on it because it changes everything. And suddenly you realize that clock ticking, when do you rest, when do you not rest? It, there's a whole strategy that goes on. Um, John McCain just says, uh, where is the goat? John McCain, which goat? And we talk, I mean, there's so many. The, the goat? Oh gosh, I don't know. Women or men? I mean, I mean, you could argue that Yanya is the goat, possibly. I'd argue currently. that, Currently. Yeah. Yanya's got a broken toe, uh, and she's yeah, preparing for the World Cup season, so that's yep. why she's not here, I think, um, if that answers your question. Uh, yeah, someone's mentioning I've been bashing the chin. Yes, I have, as you can see. Really disgusting. Apologies about that. Uh, <laughs> we have to get Matt a mic that fits in his ear. Yes, this is the... Um, this is the mic that we used 
to talk to the director. Mm -hmm. Sean can get it in his ear. I apparently fail at this. So, Sean, if he says anything important, can you just let me know? I will. I cannot I will. get the thing in. Uh, some more questions coming through. How do setters make problems to accommodate for different body types of competitors? Height is obviously the first thing you think about. Yeah, and so uh, it, it's a great question because it's one of those things that are actually pretty easily overlooked. Mm -hmm. And so the root setters, I mean, it's just part of their job that they should, you know, they have something on their mind, they're going to set it, and then they should do a little bit of problem solving. They can, you know, if the person has an arm span of six four, six five, can they span any moves, and does it make it a lot easier? Because okay. sometimes, if they can span it, it's like no big deal because they get, they get kind of stuck, we'll say, in that position. Mm -hmm. But if it makes it a lot easier, then they're probably going to say, okay, well then how do I tweak this folder to make it more or less fair for all body types? There's going to be limits to that because, you know, as a man, if you're, and this is going to be very just generic, but if you're under like, you know, 5, 2 without a plus ape index, mm -hmm. Like, you're going to be screwed in World Cups. So, like, personally, I'm almost 5'7", but I have a plus 2.5 index, so I have about a 5'9 wingspan. Huh. And so, I'm barely tall enough to do some moves, and I complain about it a lot, because I feel like I'm short, but, you know, who doesn't like to complain, right? Gotta use excuses, I mean, and, that's uh, part of it. But it's, it's funny, because, like, uh, I was actually trying to go through it, I was going through this about a week ago, and I was trying to say, who is the shortest male Boulder World Cup winner? Do you, do you know? Did and you what is out? their height? I'm trying to think now of all the World Cup winners I've seen. So, we can ask the chat, but uh, I narrowed it down to, I believe, it is Sean Bailey. And he is about... Five, five. So I maybe have an inch and a half on him. Um, it's funny because Google said he's five three or something, and I was like, he's not five three. Um, but I, I, yeah. Let's say let's say five five. And Boulder again, very important because I know Ramon um, is five two mm -hmm. roughly, and he's won many League World Cups. We're talking bouldering here. And then uh, after we find the very very shortest, we'll say bouldering in the last ten years. Eventually we will do that. But yeah, shortest <laughs> boulder male World Cup winner. Well, the geeks on YouTube watching, and I say geeks, I mean the stat kings and queens on YouTube, do let us know who is the shortest World Cup holder. We got it wrong. Uh, people are asking when the climbing started. It's starting at 10 past seven, so that's in two minutes. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a bit of a delay between me saying that, but only about 30 seconds. Uh, Mark is gonna win, someone's saying. Now, Mark is one of quite a few um, athletes from the Netherlands, home athletes here. We talked about Lisa Clem a lot, but what does that home, is there an advantage to being a home athlete? Oh, or does it just put the pressure on? Oh, that's, a, that's a good question. Does it help? Does it not help? I'm going to say that the, the pros usually outweigh the cons. And being at home is, is just really nice. Uh, it's hard for some competitors that aren't used to being in the, sp in the spotlights because then all of a sudden they're at home. They're like, oh, you're going to be the home crowd favorite. You're going to do this. And you're like, I'm not supposed to win. I'm just like this, whatever. But uh, no, usually it helps because at least for me, I'm almost more motivated because I'm at home and like I want to show my family, my friends that I am good or I deserve to be here. Yeah. Where like when I'm off in yeah, wherever else in the world, it's just like, well, no one, no one knows me around here. I'll just climb and if I'm 10th or 2nd or 3rd or 20th or 50th, like I'm, no one cares. Yeah. Like, when you're at home, it's like everyone cares. And so I, I feel like there's a good home crowd advantage, uh, but obviously you'll get stories where it really really hurt someone. Are we going to see a Canadian World Cup anytime soon? Mainly because I want to go to Squamish. Uh, I want to go climb there. I want someone to pay my air for <laughs> Oh man, um, I, I really hope so. We have had Boulder World Cups and a Speed World Cup in the past. We've never had a Lead World Cup, obviously. Um, but, but I hope so. Uh, will it happen before you know Paris in 2024? I would say unlikely, because we usually know the schedule a year or two in advance. 2025, totally possible. Somewhere in the next, I mean, that'll be talking quads with the Olympics and everything, but I would say 2025 at the absolute earliest, most likely a boulder. But uh, we do have host, or we do have um, gyms basically that can host a lead mm -hmm. uh, and obviously speed. So 2025, let's go with that. Right. Well, climbing is underway, and we've got our first athlete out onto the stage. This nice. is Genya Kazbekova from Ukraine. Made it into the finals, just she's the first athlete to have a go at this slab. So. <laughs> There she is standing on stage. Not quite sure where the boo was for there, not for her, I reckon. So, first athlete out. And important flashes, quick sends if possible. And there is Jens de Loo from the Netherlands. So, we're underway, they're turning face in the wall. The men's have got that overhang. The women start with the slab and will be flicking 
between the action as we get going here. So yeah, this is the, uh, the very powerful one. And that was the mono, that it looked like he was crimping. But I wasn't, I wasn't quite sure. It doesn't look like a full, full mono. Oh, he makes that jump. That, you were saying that jump didn't look too bad. It's the jump after. So if they stick that move, because the arrival hold is not terrible, I think that the last, last move is easy. And this is, that's like the, the last hard move of the boulder. So she did the first move into the zone, got the zone, that's the first hard move, and then when she fell here, that was the, that was the second move of the boulder. And you're one of our World Cup athletes, she's used to the pressure. Now this, that's a crimp, and then he's dodging the mono. So the mono, because there's a crimp above that mono, like a little edge, didn't seem to be using it. Yeah, and so this is the part where I don't know if you're supposed to go up to the pocket and then do like a heel toe on the start hole and then come into the mono and then jump out of it, or maybe go to the pocket and throw your feet in front of you to then go feet first. It's it's hard. It's hard. They obviously previewed together. They're trying to figure it out, but they're gonna figure it out now one at a time. Right here she is again on that jump. We flick back. Oh, Jenny just misses that jump up. So that's the tricky move. And what makes it difficult to stick that? So it looks like, and again, I just didn't look at it very closely, but it looks like the hold that to me looked like a jug. It's only actually a jug on the one side. So when you're aiming and you're doing a dynamic move to get the top of it's actually quite bad, which is why it's hard to stick. But then once you get your hands on it, again, I think that the last move is not going to be easy, or it will be easy, but we'll see. Well, we've got a split screen action here. No clock on the screen at the moment. Hopefully we'll get that sorted for you. The athletes have got a couple of minutes left and it's worth talking about time now because this is a different style of format, a bit more old school, the four plus rule. So tell us about that. Yeah, so the four plus rule is actually like one of the, again, more favored formats of basically all the competitors. And it means that if you get on the wall at 3.59, nice, she hit, she hit exactly. And look at, oh, look how easy that last one was. Oh, I love, love being right like that. Oh, yeah. she killed it, so third try. Great from her. You can see at the top of the wall, after she made that jump, she just leaped up to finish things off. So yeah, an easy end. Super happy. Again, so it's the four plus. If you get on the wall uh, with one second left on the clock, you're allowed to finish that attempt. If you get on the wall with you know, 10 seconds left, you're allowed to also finish that attempt. But basically, it means if you're on the wall and the timer expires, uh, you can finish that attempt. Yeah, and it can be quite exciting. We have had instances in the past where the athletes stay on the wall for a long time. That's one of the reasons they stopped it, in fact, is just you couldn't predict. What is he doing there? I, fi I finally figured out what that mono is. It's because you're supposed to split grip it. So three fingers go in the pocket and your thumb goes in the mono. Ah. So it is technically a mono on a boulder, but it's a cheeky mono because it's a split grip and I actually now like it. I didn't spot that at all, I'll be honest. I didn't see it. Okay, so big, big span for the hands there in order to get that thumb into action. Hello everyone who's watching us. You've missed the preamble, but we're into the competition itself. If you want to see me and Sean talk some rubbish, talk to some athletes, do check out the beginning of the show when this is finished. But right now we're here in the commentary box and we're on the first athlete out with 19 seconds to go. And this is where we could see this four plus thing. And it makes a difference to resting, doesn't it? Because you don't need to, to get going to complete the boulder within the time. You can wait to the last moment. It's, it's exactly that. And it, it's really good because this last try, you try so hard because you know it's your last try. So there's the timer. Sadly, he couldn't stay on the wall. The reds turn light. So no top for Jens Delo. The top for Jenya Kazbakova. And next up, one of your teammates is about to come out, Sean, Alana Yip. Alana looking very relaxed here this weekend, very chilled out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's, she's obviously been, been training a bunch, and these early competitions are great, again, for testing. Like, uh, she hasn't been in a competition for however many months, and, you know, we're doing three in a row, but here she's super, super stoked. She's in finals. Uh, she didn't climb especially well in semis. I was talking to her a little bit, but she climbed well on certain boulders to do it. She was a little bit frustrated by only getting zone on two and three, um, but very happy and, and almost relieved to be in finals, and so she's uh, going to try really hard. So Sergio Vidasco, he gets that big pinch that we were talking about. Sticks the move, first go. Gets the right foot through, and then this is an awkward move out. Gets a toe, and he's aiming for those crimps. The top one is the best, but it is blocked. Oh, and there's a big lick there, but it's quite blind when you're underneath it like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 
and it's a it's a really cool move by the Ritsu. It's basically just to, I don't know if you grab the other one with your right hand and then campus, or if, yeah, go again and bring the other hand underneath, put out right, and a hard move to the finish. Yeah, this is very good. I think it might be his flash mm -hmm. attempt. Yeah, so the finish. It's a cool bowler. So it looks like too the last move is not crazy hard. But to get into that position, to get those hands sorted out and those two little ones before, that's the hard part. So Alana is into the first really tricky move of this. This awkward jump that kind of barn doors you off. Quite slow and static almost up to that. Yeah, and uh, it's hard because when Jenya did it, uh, she it's all about that getting your weight over your hips. And when you're standing up, to not be leaning back, which is the hardest thing in the world. So Alana takes her time. Two minutes 26 on the clock. With that plus four, it means she can rest longer. Hello to everyone watching us back at home. Hope you're enjoying the first big international comp of the year. From now on, things just ramp up in terms of intensity. Alana into the corner. Easy first couple of moves, but this is where things get difficult. You can see, just eyeing it up. Now, this is one of those positions with the four plus. You could stay in that corner for quite a long time when that buzzer goes. Yeah, you totally can, and it's funny because like, uh, <laughs> the athletes that did that kind of ruined it for all of us, just saying. Uh, but no, it should be in the rules where where basically in the final boulders, the root setters shouldn't set something like that if it is a four plus. Or the IFSC adds some other one where uh, an attempt can't last for more than you know 90 seconds. Like it's very rare that we see someone climb for a minute and a half. Make it two minutes, like, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but it's funny because a lot of competitors even like make it three plus, what, three minutes plus your last try, make it two plus. Like we don't care, we just really love the plus, the excitement of being on the wall with no time left. And even for the crowd, like everyone loves it. So I'll keep fighting for that. <laughs> you do that, Sean. I hope. Well, I've never commented on a competition, on an IFSC competition with that four plus rule. Obviously the uh, local ones. Alana, what is she using for her left hand? I'm oh, just crimping the edge of the wall. I just uh, found a little seam and. Oof. That seemed to work. Got her a bit set up for that jump. So nails in action there as Alana finishes the boulder. A little shake of the head. I think she should have thought she should have got it earlier, but she's got plenty of time now to go back with a minute to go. It's hard too because uh, they know that the competitor before them topped the boulder. They can roughly guess that it wasn't a flash because of how quickly it was. They're thinking, okay, maybe it took three or four tries. So when you fall on the boulder, you're like, okay, it is hard but I still need to be able to do it. And so it's just like right away, it's just a, that's the hard mental part of the competition. So yeah, you can hear the crowd cheering. A lot of the athletes are kept isolated. They'll definitely be able to hear. So we're watching a replay here of Alana. Up to the top, no feet, easy peasy for her at the end. And gets her comp off with the top. Right, next athletes coming on for the men. It is going to be Hannes van Dyson. And for the women, Camilla Maroni and Camilla I've loved watching her in recent years come from that youth circuit into the senior circuit. She looks like she belongs on the biggest of stage and she looks strong. Hannes nice. gets right on. Oh, two fingers. Oh, it does it though. Look comfortable on that move too. Yeah, a little bump and now he's got to get those toes way above his head. One toe locked in. And remember from here, completely blind on those crimps. And no tick marks allowed in these competitions. Sometimes the root setters will add one, especially in league comps. The first. So he's opted not to bump yet. Looking is, at it. That left hand is terrible. It's the worst hole yeah. on that route. If he's looking for the cross, which he is. Oh. And you can see it there, um, which kind of confirms what Matt was saying. The first one's so bad, you really need the bump and then come in with, to the bad one with your, right, with your right hand. So some people are saying Alana's just done a two millimeter seam crimp. <laughs> so who's, what's more insane, Alana's two millimeter crimp or Brooke Rabatou's bolt foothold finish? <laughs> Both unique, let's say that. Right, Camilla eyes up this jump into the corner. Now this could be a good opportunity to explain the zones for people who don't know because we can see it there, zone, red marker, that's the first scoring opportunity. Yeah, it is, and so you only have to control the zone with one hand, but you do have to use the hold. So there she kind of brushed it, they wouldn't actually give it to her yet. So you do have to grab it, and then now, now that she's kind of moved around on it, she would get it. Whereas if you touch it and then you fall, you're not supposed to get it. And It's a really tricky rule, because there are only a certain... 
come on. There's only a certain situations where you can actually touch the zone and you really can't move. But it's tricky. Oh, oh wow. Well, way better. And he didn't have those toes, which meant he could bring the cross through more easily. Yeah, a really interesting way to do that. Well, no toes could be the way to go on that. Yeah, basically just completely... Oh, basically skipped the toe, the feet first. Basically did the hard first move, heel look, and then straight up with his left hand. Left hand, right hand? I forget. One hand. One of them. Camilla having a few problems through this, and I always think it's a bit tough to start with a slab, especially one with a jump in it, because it can throw some people off. I know some athletes hate a slab to start things. It, it is hard, but it's so common too that when we start with one, we're like, yeah, okay, we start with a slab. And it's funny because you warm up, you warm up, you warm up for everything, and then you're like running around on your feet and doing these little jumps. And... Yeah, Camilla having a few problems with this. And it's always this moment in a comp where you realize that the moves you thought were easy maybe are a bit trickier for some. Skipping across, less than a minute, but she's got that four plus, and we know there's a corner, so if she works it out and manages to stop, she'll give herself a little bit more time here. This is where balance comes into play. It's awkward, you're gonna be barn dooring off. She wants to find something with that left hand. You can see it creeping around. Alana got to the top of the wall where the crimp was, above that zone marker. so delicate. She knows she needs to bring in the left foot. And she's palming her left hand against the wall to stop the barn door and it was working. See a bit of frustration from Camilla there. Falling off a slab. It's just one of those things. So often nothing to do with strength if you just pop off in a, a sab at the bottom of the wall. You can see what she was thinking. Well, she's got eight seconds and she, uh, she's going to finish things off so didn't need the extra time. And our first athlete not to top that boulder. Funny enough, she might actually not know that it's four plus. Just from her body language in that last try, she was actually kind of stressed about the time. Um, and then she didn't try it the last try to the end. Uh, hopefully she figures it out because it's, it's, a, it's huge actually, especially in this format. Right, next up, Lynn van der Meer from the Netherlands. Local favourite, got a big reaction, and the Nimrod Marcus isn't there, he is for the men from Israel. Now, a few people are commenting that perhaps they don't know about the four plus. They will have been briefed on it, but when you're an IFSC athlete like you, oh, sorry, but what a strength from Nimrod there. Well, with the hand cut, too. And... Like a... So much strength in the left arm there. Yeah, just kind of caught the one arm up. Right, he's gone for the toe method. And this, I oh, popped the foot and immediately asked for a brush from our brush team. If you uh, caught the interviews we did earlier on, we did speak to the brushers. Definitely a group of people who don't get enough attention. As uh, Lynn Vandermeer on the left of your screen starts to work out this coordination move, I guess we could call it. Oh yeah, for sure coordination. And it's hard because you have to get the coordination part, but you have to stop and then put your hips again into the wall. And that's the hard part, is the coordination. Whenever you're running like that, you wanna, you wanna lean away so if you slip, you don't like scrape your face down the wall. But here you actually have to put your face really close to the wall and hope you don't slip. So Nimrod's having a long rest as he looks up. I think he thought he got quite close on that. And he's still struggling with the first sequence. He's having a big look at that zone hold. Let's see if he can catch that again. So I think it was more of a mistake, perhaps, that left arm. Gets the pinch, sets himself for the jump. More in control this time. Oh, well, it looked straight up, too. He's going to cut the campus. Tempted. So, went out to a foothold, which is now going to have chalk on it, which could be interesting for the athletes coming afterwards. They might think it's a handhold. People are asking about the four plus thing. Four plus thing, a little bit different. It means that the athletes, if they get on the wall before the four minute buzzer goes, they can stay on the wall. As long as they don't touch the ground, they can keep climbing theoretically for as long as they want. Crowd really getting behind Lynn there. She gets closer, one minute 48 on the clock, learning the moves. And again, Nimrod, just resting. I thought he was going to camp us up to the crimps, 
Well, it was funny because obviously Hannah straight before him got his heel on and then went straight up. And so when I was looking at him about the campus, it looked like it could totally work. And so if he gets his heel on, then he would actually be doing it the same way. I decided to go to the foot hole. We'll see what he does here. Probably the toe method again. Because we know it works too. So off he goes blind, misses it the first time. Toe's oh, still staying. And now he needs to bump again, upgrades the toe. He's thinking about a cross through. That was a really smart too. He flipped his right hand from an undercling to a reverse undercling just to get higher and just barely didn't get that little bump with his left hand. Those bumps, I find when I'm personally climbing, that those are the kind of moves that burns me out quite a lot because you've got to reuse the it's same It's super arm. hard too. You're not moving more than a few inches and yet it's so hard. 36 seconds. Nimrod is likely to wait right until the last couple of seconds here and give it one last go. Lin cleans the zone hold. Let's watch a replay of this. So here, he flips his right hand around. Really hard to see because his body's in the way, but he flipped it from an undercling to a reverse undercling before the bump. And look right at his there. head here because it shows that you can't really see. The wall really kicks up. Got his fingertips on it, but not quite enough to make it work. So with five seconds to go, Nimrod's in. Now, it's interesting for Lynn because if she made it into that corner, she could have stayed there. But now you see this four plus in action, Nimrod can carry on climbing. Oh, caught himself. Wow, go straight to the second one. Oh. No, that's a, that's a hard move. Hard move and changing his beta as well for that last attempt. I thought he would have stuck with what he was practicing. Yeah. Maybe he just thought he was on the wall too long and he was just getting too, too tired. Well, we move on with Sam Abazu, second to last athlete out. And Stashigo will get a big reaction from the crowd. When I was chatting to them, a lot of them were saying that was her fav their favorite climber. And I think it's something about Stash's personality. You could see her personality at all times, yeah. regardless whether she's angry or happy. Yeah, that's really true. Stash is good at these kind of movement-based problems. Blows the holds, knows she's got the time here, doesn't need to rush it. And then Sam Abazu, well, I'm expecting him to be pretty special on this kind of a boulder. Got the thumb in, remember, what we thought was a mono, is a pinch. So strong. And Stash will flash straight to the zone too. Stash is setting up for a huge jump here, but she wants to get that right. Oh, Sam went back and forth almost on those two holds. He looks like he's gonna... Let's get his foot on. Sam looks like he's got so much time, as does Stasher on the left. As she gets it done, that's a flash for her. And that is a big statement. Some people seeing her as the favourite, and Sam Abazu as well, gets the top done. So that's two out of two from our top two. So we're about to see Lisa Clem come out and Mark Brand, both from Netherlands, and Lisa Clem, or let's see a replay of Stasher, up with the left hand, that left leg wildly swinging. She held the barn door, and then from there, as we know, simple to the top, jugs all the way. Yeah, it's one of those one of those moves where uh, Stasher's height, it helps because I assume when you're trying to stand up like that, she just did it so well to get her hips over her foot and even kept the foot on, didn't really have to jump too much to it. And then was just perfectly in control hitting the hole just after that zone. Well, after a few no tops, we've seen a double flash there from both the athletes and Sam is being ushered somewhere. Lisa is in the middle there with the Mad Rock t-shirt on, just waiting to compete, keeping herself warm. People are asking what the conditions are like in the gym. Good question. It's actually a bit chilly down there, but it does heat up especially when the athletes start shouting, so when the crowd start shouting. So Mark Brand on the right, there is Lisa on the left. Now this is going to be fascinating because Lisa, four out of four flashes, was it just luck? Was it just one of those brilliant moments you have with an athlete sometime? Or does she have the class and the potential to win this competition? Well, we haven't got the flashes, but Lisa, is underway. Mark, very tall through these. Pops. His hand popped like instantly. That was that was crazy. Like. 
Lisa once again, her second attempt. Not quite getting there. Apologies, I said the Netherlands. I meant Netherlands. Sorry about that. Someone pointed that out on YouTube. It's the hard thing about YouTube comments is you can immediately tell your mistake. <laughs> you don't get to think about it until later. The Netherlands. Isn't it the Netherlands? I, I thought it was, but someone's complaining about it. Uh, Matt, it's the... Ne Did I say Netherlands? Maybe it's that. Maybe I didn't say the. Right, OK. My mistake, everyone. Apologies about that. But well, Lisa is in the corner. Really needs a top here if she's going to keep in contact with the winners. And we'll show the score after Lisa competes here. Well, after Lisa Hallmark finishes. Good palm. Going to get to this move. So it's going to be a yeah, right foot up and then a little pop. Does it in one movement, beautiful from her, finishes things off, does what she needed to do, and if she was feeling any nerves, I think that might settle things down a bit. Three attempts? Yeah, it was two, two or three attempts, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, three attempts, it looks, sounds about right. Well, well, that will settle her down. Mark, meanwhile, has got to finish things off here. Interesting, too, because she didn't flash the zone. So Jenya and Alana and Sasha will all be ahead. But they all have, uh, well, Sasha has obviously the flash, but then the rest of them actually have three tries. All of them, I think. Yeah, so really close here. Look at that core strength from Mark as he bicycles his legs in the air. And look at that height. He found that much, much easier. Is he going to go for the bump? I think he wants to cross through yeah. with the right. Kind of needs the bump, though. <sighs> actually looked pretty solid doing that, too. and. If the second hold is a lot better, once you get it, it, you still have to put your foot out right and still do the last move off the hold that's bad. So it's a, uh, it's hard. It's tricky. It still might not be over if he does that. Move. Well, Mark is one minute sixteen on the clock. Do you say hello in the comments. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. All the usual YouTube stuff as we watch Mark cross through. He came pretty close there. Didn't seem to get as tangled up when he brought the right hand through as we've seen other people doing. Had a bit more yeah, room. it's uh, it's hard. I'm really curious just what the holds feel like. Because it seems very natural to go up with your right hand, but we know that it's better to go for the, the bump again, so tricky. Oh, not using the toe system, now gets the toe in. Oh, and he goes all the yeah, way. That's better. Well, that's an example of using your height to the advantage, isn't it? It's not yeah. an advantage, just he's worked out how to do it. Nice finish from him, just needs that. Good shot. Well, the green light goes on to indicate a top. He doesn't know which way to go. We can't help him, but he's out anyway. And that is our first boulder done. So hopefully we'll get a chance to look at the scores. We know Stash is in the lead. And Sean, they're just tweaking these boulders here, so we'll get a couple of minutes of break. Usually, obviously not ideal to change a boulder mid-session, but necessary sometimes in gyms. Yeah, we see this even at the World Cup um, a lot, where they, in between the boulders, they, the root setters, they do this, they can do it so quickly. And they're just taking off the holds that are close to the next boulder. And so during the observation, they would have said, okay, look, you guys are climbing this white boulder. You're allowed to grab all the holes you can reach. So they're going to say, okay, with this, this blue hold or this black hold, when it's your turn to climb this boulder, it's going to be gone. Like, it will be gone. So don't you know, add it to your, to your view. Oh, and this one, they actually took out one. So now they're putting it back on the wall. So just a little added stress for the root setters. Someone's saying on YouTube, when in doubt, lank it out. Yes, agreed. Well, during this little pause, we will be showing you the scores in a couple of minutes. I'm being told by our guys who are working on it behind the scenes. Loving the chat, by the way. Please keep that coming. The best part, too, about the routers being able to do this is they can use more of the wall because they're not climbing, you know, boulder obviously one and two at the same time. The fall zone, the fall zone for boulder two might have been where they were climbing before. Obviously, they were finishing that blue boulder and their feet were like really close to that wall. and so. Put those holds back on. They might not even need to remove any of the blue holds, but their pass would have crossed had they been climbing at the same time. 
Well, while the route setters are busy, let's look at the stores. As we said, Stasha, top position, flash for her, followed by Lisa Clem, so she's still in touch. And then Genia after that in third place. That's crazy too. Remember how I said they all took three tries? I was just wrong. Genia took four tries and Alana took five tries. So Lisa is uh, securely in second and it's actually pretty cool to see that, you know? One, three, four, and five, and then, uh, and then a zone, and then, uh, and then Jen's uh, uh, I'm not, I'm not getting it. And then for the men, Sam Abazu at the top of the leaderboard. What a flash from him, followed by Sergio and Hannes van Dyson after that. So that's our top three after Boulder number one. Lots of tops, but good separation, as you're saying. We're not seeing everyone get the same score straight away. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, a couple flashes. And again, it's only the first boulder, so you don't, you don't know what's going to happen. It's still wide open. I know it's really hard if you don't get zone or you don't get a top, and everyone else did. You're kind of thinking, like, oh, can, I, can I bring it back? Is there going to be a boulder that I can do that no one else can? And you just have to kind of shut down that negative talk and just say, look, I'm just going to climb these boulders one at a time see where, where, where it falls. I think I'm enjoying this moment more than anything because I know how much Root Setters hate to be on live streams and on TV. <laughs> so this is their worst nightmare is uh, on the mats, on the ladders. I've never had a Root Setter in the commentary box with me and I'd love to get one in because I want to see their frustration, their insights, because so often you see them after the comp and they're like, did you see that? The way they did it, they just didn't understand it. And I want them to tell us about that. Yeah, it's funny, I, uh, some, there's, there's a big, uh, well, some root setters are really great about it. They love actually hearing the athletes' feedback, and unfortunately, some root setters don't want to hear the athletes' feedback, and it's almost a little bit frustrating talking to them. But you know, it's just different difference of personalities, and uh, and I understand the struggles of being a root setter, and it's a hard job. It is a crazy hard job to create boulders that have tops, but not too many tops, and that are exciting, and that create new movement, and that aren't dangerous, and that everyone likes. It's great, it's super, super hard, but when they get it right, it's like, very nice. Well, they've cleared the stage, and that means it's time to move on to boulder number two. One down, three to go. Stasha and Sam at the top of the leaderboard, but everyone in touch at the moment. People saying we should have a best brusher competition. Well, I'll tell you what, if you've spotted a particularly good brusher out there on the mats, let us know. Just describe them in a polite way, please. And uh, I'll try to find them afterwards. We'll give them some kind of award, probably a beer. Yeah, I wonder if they have like a technique or do they always brush the same hold at the same time or do they just ask the competitor or... I do know I, I talked to one World Cup brusher and he was adamant that in between every World Cup climber he brushed exactly the same hold three times. It was like brush, brush, brush because he didn't want to favor anyone. And so it was just funny because, you know, just, just, just brushing like... The competitor before them might have not even gotten to that hold. So now that you brush it an extra three times, maybe the competitor after has to just like, just don't think about it too much, just brush as much as you can. And <laughs> but it is interesting because the amount of extra jobs that goes on around the competition, B layers, for example, especially in the States, B laying is a serious business. There's a hierarchy that goes on there. I mean, belaying, imagine, <laughs> okay, you belay once, yeah, okay, cool, it's not so hard, twice, yeah, okay, three, four, five times. These belayers are belaying like 40 people in a row with no break, and they have to be on, because I know I get pissed if they hose me on my clips, and like, most of the time, the belayers are superb, and sometimes it's like the, their military, or, or their, um, they, they, have a, they have a whole club of belayers, but uh, normally the belaying in World Cups is phenomenal. All right, we're underway. Genia comes onto the stage. As does Jens de Loop. There she is, announced to the crowd. In darkness at the moment, the lights will be switched on. And here we go, our first look at boulder number two. Of course, we went through it before the show, but if you've just joined us, it's a run and jump start for the men. And Possibly a few ways of doing this beginning, maybe. Do you think it will stop in the corner? Sean is adamant there's a corner, a corner stop here. Let's see. And we didn't get to the corner on that one. We will still. A lot of people loving the, uh, the brush door. Oh, yeah. Then you're coming up to the zone. Uh, yeah, for the women, tricky, powerful, it's two moves. Uh, and then you have to throw your feet out, similar to the men's boulder, where you're going a little bit feet first. 
and then you have to get your feet all the way out right and do a weird press that I know would be extremely hard for me to do on the last move, but I think these women will do it quite nicely. I was quite surprised how good the holds are on women's number two, but it's the lack of feet that are quite Yeah, it's exactly that. A lot of them are basically underclings or uh, the zone's like a big shoulder, and to get from there all the way to the top, your foot's gonna go way out right, and you have to go through that whole press. No, in the end here, there we go, stopping in the corner. You called it. It's crazy too because I didn't expect them to, to like climb into it. I expected it to be a jump into it, but I don't know if it's because he's taller or if that's like the way that they said it. Like this looks very normal for like kind of groveling your way through. He's gonna want to get his right foot here and face the crowd, give a little wave and it'll be a little bit easier. He's picking his own foot up there, just, it does help. I know it looks bizarre, but honestly, try it. It changes the boulder there, doesn't it? Because it makes it from a kind of speedy thing into almost a slab climb. You know, they're tiptoeing their way across, and now he's got to do it all again. Oh, <laughs> he has another so go. Hard. And I was going to say, it looks like you can almost get your right foot up first before that jump. Oh, on the start of this women's boulder, it looks crazy hard. So both athletes come a bit unstuck in the middle of this boulder. One minute 46. The four plus rule is going to help Jens there. He knows that if it comes down to it, he can stop in that corner, shake out, take his time. And he's doing that slow method. So pressing out with the right hand, getting into the corner. Much easier from him that time. Yeah, and he can just barely touch the corner and then get his right foot up. And uh, yeah, it's a great, great way to do it. I'm really curious if it's a face out here, because if you put your right foot to this, you face out to the crowd, and then when you do the jump, you're swinging, so your left foot might actually hit that triangle up, and then you would actually be set on the jump. He was really close the first time, so I feel like he'd be able to adapt and just do this jump also facing up. There we go, see. And the last one's not a gimme, but I'm curious how hard it is. Yeah, kind of an undercling, but the feet are bad. He's got his left foot on the volume. Oh, he's going to try to rock up on that heel. He has a, a screw on on that volume, I think, for the left foot. So this one, I believe, is a move where you have to commit 100%. And, and the thing is, committing 100%, let's say you do that as a run and jump. You know, that's a couple of seconds and you jump to the top. The way he does it, mm -hmm. makes that move even more committing. Yeah, that, that, it was kind of like that that I saw. So the next hold's for sure an underclang, and I don't know if you want to get your foot up at the same time, or... Again, that's one of those moves where you just have to feel it. And he's definitely going to count it down and then give it one last try. Yeah, both the athletes. Actually, not both. We've only got one climbing at the moment. If your hands aren't sweaty watching this, they should be. Three seconds to go, he's on the wall, but he can take as long as he wants. I thought he might even take a chalk bag into the corner there. Right, so he's done everything but the final move, which he really just needs to commit 100% to now. You can hear the crowd almost holding their breath. The floor is lava. That's the first jump. Will he use the heel? Will he just boost? Always. You can see the angle of that. There's not a lot on the top of that two heel hook on. It's kind of blocked on purpose. Oh, push, 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 push. Oh, his foot pops just at the end. My shoulders were screaming. I'm sure yours are as well, being injured well, like that. Especially on that right shoulder. Yeah. Something I don't want to do right now. No, those press moves. Horrible if you've got a shoulder issue. Well, he's hit the ground, so that's the end of his round. No tops. Let's watch a replay of that. Watch his left foot. There's the pop. And that looked solid. That's probably the way to do it. All right, Sergio Vadasco comes out. He had a fairly quick send of his first problem. And then Alana, big smile to the crowd. She got a top on Boulder 1 as well. She's laughing. I don't. I don't know what she's laughing about, but <laughs> definitely smiles on her face. Right. This would be interesting. As a root setter, he might, he's obviously seen the run and jump. But has he seen the other method? 
perhaps it's not running. Maybe it's just straight creeping across. Yeah, yeah, and that looks nice. And the well, Lana's made it through the, the opening moves. Jenny couldn't do it. So left hand on the crimp, then she gets into the zone. She should get the points for that. It's crazy too, because she hasn't used that foot out left. And the way she's doing it, she won't really use it. Cuts loose, holds it, and now the final big press. This is a flash go. Sergio's as well, flash attempt. Into the big shoulder. Oh, big press. A little foot pop there. Oh, what's he gonna do? Wants to get that wrap, but... Yeah. Just doing it slow. Here we go. Oh, oh the foot, foot pop. I didn't have a chance to see if there's any dual techs on that hold, or, or on the foot, or maybe it's just so small that you, you can't get it, but whatever, it is causing problems for some of them. And Alana, I looked away and missed it. What happened? I think her foot popped, but... She might have just tried to rush it a little bit because she's kind of shaking her head like, oh, I just, you know, did, did something wrong. So Because she fell on the last move too, like, I wouldn't be surprised if she waits almost another minute and a half and just give this one last try. Well, Lana sits with the lights behind her, shadow on the wall. And Sergio is back into the corner, came so close in his flash go. Straight away. He almost went for the pinch there. Yeah, that was uh, unexpected. Oh, not allowed to do that, but that's okay. Technically, every time he jumps, it's a try, but... Is it really? So if you jump up to brush a hole? Because you're not allowed to leave the ground and brush a hole. Huh. Yeah. You're also not allowed to use your own brush, but those are IFSC rules. <laughs> I feel like I need to reread the rule book. I did not know that was a thing. So yeah. Harry, if you're standing there sort of jumping up and down in excitement, that's like four attempts straight No, away. it's only if you touch the wall. And because okay. you're touching the brush that touched the wall, that's when you're not allowed to do it. Whereas if you jumped up and blew on the hole just to get rid of the chalk, that's allowed. Which is funny, because I've done that tons of times at competition, and someone said, the judge is like, oh, there's a try. I'm like, it's not. <laughs> Respectfully, respectfully, it's not. <laughs> respectfully, be quiet, sir. Or lady. Right, here we go. Sergio, eyeing up the big move, sets himself. He is going for the pinch, and I, I think uh, Jens had it right where going for the shoulder, whether he goes for the wrap or the whatever. Uh, I think the wrap is actually the way to go. With the wrap, though, do you lose a little bit of distance on the left hand? You, you actually push. gain a little bit of distance, but it's harder because you have to um, you have to get higher for it to be usable. Okay. It's uh, yeah, it's weird. Like cause when you're like when you have the shoulder, you can lock off. Whereas if the other one, you have to use momentum. So the first he was super close there, and you can just see his shoulders just screaming. And so yeah, you have to get really high and almost like you push up right away and it'll almost be like right away. You can almost put your foot up because you're really in that, that kind of like iron cross position. It's the vertical iron cross. Yeah, he keeps going for that pinch and it's gonna leave a lot of chalk up there as well. So again, something the other athletes might see, might think it's a pinch, but we know so far it's the shoulder move with the fingers and then the match. Oh, now Alana's using that foot hold. Changed up her beta, too. Right, sudden death now. He's got a toe hook to rest. He's resting a little bit. Alana's got the foot hold out there. Hopefully that'll help her for the last move here. Well, this is where this 4 plus is exciting. Both athletes almost treating it like a lead competition as they chalk up and shake out. Sergio comes down. No go for him. Alana on the wall. Using all of that lead endurance strength that she possesses. Yeah, foot over, and you do have to press, flip, and then flip. Oh, it looks like she's running out, of, running out of gas a little bit on this. Yeah, every time she drops down, it's going to cost her a bit. But she can... That's clever that's work good, on the that's left. Good. Get the foot over, keep push, pushing. There we go. It's hard. Keep pressure on that toe and just push. Bumping that's the hand. It, that's it. Yeah, he stood up. She has to flip her left hand. She can't see that left foot though. Oh, chin in play almost. Now she can see the final hole. Got to press her way into it. But watch she that really needs foot. to flip her left arm. Oh, 
Oh, she's been on the wall for such there a long go, there time. There you go, there you go, there you go. All of that. She was trying so hard there. We could see the output. She was so close. She got the flip. Needed to just press a tiny, tiny bit more. Got this flip here. Ah, oh, it just wasn't going to go. lost it at the end there. And the thing is, is she's basically climbed for five minutes, not four. So now she's got to go. She'll have a little bit less rest, but probably not too much to put her off. It, it's hard because with this format, you do get a pretty big rest. So, you know, four, almost five minutes per competitor. There's another five competitors. So you're resting for probably 20, almost 25 minutes. With the little change that the root setters need to do too, you're not worried about it. You're only really worried if the if the boulders after you start flashing the boulder. Because if four people ahead of you or whatever flash it, then it's like, oh, now I only have a 10 minute rest. She's most likely thinking because it's a hard boulder, she's gonna be okay. She's just gonna go back, relax, most likely rest for at least 15 minutes. Camilla Aroni is campusing around and this is one of those boulders I thought she might be good at. This is her style. Loves the physicality of these moves. Yeah, she matched too. Didn't even cross to the zone. And again, this is where we're going to see. You got to get that foot out right. So this is where Alana really had her battle. I was going to say, it looked like it wasn't quite far enough right. And you could see just at the end, it's too far left. And so it slips when you put too much pressure on it. So you can have to figure it away like Alana did to get her right foot a little bit more to the right before starting that last move. Yeah, Alana did so much with the hands. She just worked her way down the volume. Hannes again going slowly, pressing into the corner. Struggling with that move a bit. That volume he's standing on, there really isn't a lot on it. No, it's one of those volumes where, okay, that wall is probably vertical, and then the volume is probably 60 degrees overhanging, so you're standing on something that you don't really want to be standing on, and yet you have to put your foot up and walk across, and it's just uncomfortable, you guys. Absolutely. Yeah, and the camera angle doesn't always show how uh, vertical these volumes are, so it looks like he's almost standing on a ledge, but he's not. Yeah. And it's something that we practice. We specifically try to practice this, and it's all about putting volumes on the wall and what degree is then too much that you can't stand on, assuming there's no holds for you to take any weight on. Oh, a huge, such a quick jump there. Yeah, a bit of a hybrid. He creeps into the corner, and then a bit of running jump. And right away, I actually tried it just with the straight hand in the back, almost was crimping the sloper there, and it was trying it correctly too, going up, trying to do the double shoulder. This is where Camilla had the issue before, just got the toe. There you go, it's your readjust with the left foot there to get it deeper with the right. Here we go, he has to get the flip. Has a half flip. Needs to press out that arm. There you go, there you go. Should be better. So awkward, you gotta go from a face down and turn all the way around and grab with the right hand. That's, that's hard too, because now it's the problem of uh, her shoulders. So her right shoulder, she needs to get, get it past that center of gravity through and as soon as she came out her weight fell backwards as she was uh, rotating her shoulders. So close, let's see a replay. This right was here. the moment. And as soon as she straightens her arm, her right shoulder is, is facing the wrong way. And so you have to rotate that shoulder, I guess, you know, clockwise, whichever way that is. Yeah, it oh, kind of got, probably got in the way there a little bit. Oh, we're going to see go. the top. Come on, foot, 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 foot. Nice. All right, there and it's our second top, third top on it. No, Sergio didn't get it, it's the second top. Yeah, first top for the boulder, too. All right, Camilla sits in the light, 19 seconds to go. She has an eye on the clock. Yeah, one last try here. Another 10 seconds of she'll get on. A lot of people are saying that Camilla has got this if she isn't pumped. Well, let's find out. She's also really good at lead climbing, isn't she? Yeah. She's just all around a powerhouse. One to watch out for for the Olympics, I reckon, if she can qualify. Mm -hmm. Straight into the zone. Powerful from her. I think it'll just be how quickly she can get her right foot over onto that good spot. And I feel like if she gets it well, 
he likes to get on. So right away too, it's better. Yeah, really solid. That left foot looks like it's standing on something. It's not, and she slips and goes. No top for Camilla. Three athletes to go, halfway through the second boulder. And we'll update you on the scores in the break between. But Stasha leading the way, and Sam Avazu. But of course, that will have changed with the athletes topping boulders out, getting zones, but... So let's watch this again. That left foot almost had purchase. Just from the other two or three tries, getting up into that position at least twice. I think it's just so hard. And even with endurance, I think your body is just, you know, powered out. Right, Lynn Vandermeer for the women. And for the men is Nimrod Marcus. And there he is. Thought about a swing. Goes slowly, looking for something in the corner. And Lynn is straight away through the opening sequence here. Matches the crimp. And goes for the cross. It's hard for because with ooh. Oh. Problem is he's very stretched out here, out of balance. He's got to drop that left foot down. Because now he spots the right, so matches foot to hand. Uh, Chalks up. It looks restful, but there's a lot going on. A lot of muscles working to keep him in the wall, and he lost his balance there as he stepped over. The Russian team are on and going. Chat, how are you out there? Are you enjoying this competition so far? Give us a shout out. Let us know where you're watching it from. Hit the like button if you haven't already. And do say hello to myself and Sean here in the commentary box. So Lynn, again, cutting loose, there's no feet anywhere, you might as well. And now has double toes, perhaps? Hard to tell from this angle. Yeah, something like that. And she has to either, she tried the cross on the first time. You can also match as the undercling and then move your feet left first. Same method as before. Bit higher on the hold, almost had it. There we go, that was better. Yeah, way more set up for the jump now. Ooh, oh. one handed catch. <laughs> That's the second time he's done that this evening. Caught something with the left arm. Again, he takes a moment to rest on the jug. On the jug. Oh, made it look simple. Very well done. <laughs> You can see the way he's grabbing the, hold, the last hold too. It's not, it's not a full shoulder. It's actually like a reverse pistol grip on the last hold there. I like the no look at the audience, hype them up rather than the sort of cheeky turnaround. It's dangerous though. I do have to say it's, uh, it's dangerous because uh, you're a hero when it works, but uh, if you ever fall doing that, you're now the villain. Or on a highlight reel forever. So, you know, there's always, there's always a plus. There's always fame to be had. Lynn using a different method, I think, here. Matching still, but with legs way more over on the left. There you go, gets the, yeah, there you go. Matches the underclaim with the foot out there, and now she should be able to match the zone and bring her feet back towards the right. Right, now she rests, and is a bit of a lead specialist, so it's kind of a resting position for her. She'll be used to it. She's got something back, used that chalk bag, right foot kicked over. Straight into the press for her. Oh, her foot's not great on the right foot hold, but... Problem is she can't adjust that now unless she drops back down, which she does. Oh, she does drop back down. If she can get it, you know, a good four or five inches more to the right, and basically to the middle of that, you're a little bit farther out to the wall, and I think it's a bit better. Yeah, and she's going to have to stay on. 12 seconds, shaking out. Look at this. Someone will give her a harness. Flicks out, right foot in a similar position to before. Not quite far enough, and it doesn't work. Well, oh, it's just, it's hard. Like, I, I can feel how tired they are just from going through all those beginning moves and getting to a position where, at the end, you need still to have that power and be able to turn, push. And then once you get the last hole, it might not be good. You still have the match. Uh, 
was a last moment for Lynn. No top for her zone, of course. I think everyone's got the zone so far on this. But I'm saying that having not looking at the scoreboard, so I'll be quiet. Stasha runs on. Now, if these two do well on this boulder, I'll be back into the top spot. Yeah, someone's commenting that uh, I've never seen a woman doing the hype thing for the crowd. Now, I disagree. I've seen the hype thing from quite a few female athletes over the years. They definitely do do it. Just haven't tonight. Sam, a bit more dynamic on the start of that. Yeah, I've definitely, um, I've definitely seen it when they're on the ground, obviously, before their last attempt. I've definitely seen it lead climbing. Uh, before matching the finish, I, I'm almost positive that we've seen it, but uh, it is more common than that. Men, certain men. Stasher on her flash attempt. Oh, didn't even flip the arm yet. Very Is spread. She tall? Oh, she's got the left foot down low. Yeah, and she hasn't pressed. She hasn't flipped that left arm to a press yet. Figuring out. Oh, the wrap. That oh, might work. Right foot, solid connection from her. Sam Abazu eyes oh. up the jump. Stasher falls. Sam falls. Yeah, Stasha tried a different method. She was kind of in a split position, left foot down low, and then you could see her figuring it out, wanting to go over to the right. Yeah, it's crazy. Her left foot was all the way on that left red foothold when you actually need it somewhere in the middle to then push towards the right, because now she's almost too much in a split position. That's our crowd. They're packed in in the space between the boulders here. There was plywood laid on the carpets to protect it. Sam Abazu into the corner once more. He gets the right foot. Now he'll get himself set up for the jump. Meanwhile, Stasher is resting. She was on the wall a long time on that attempt and wanted to get it done quickly. This looks better for Sam. I feel like he'll be able to do it this try. Easy in, but now let's see how he's read this move. Wraps for the wrap. Nope, goes back. Aim for the cup, I think. Nope, goes for the shoulder, but it works. It's a top for Sam. That was a long way for him as well. Grabs the top of the wall to celebrate, and that should put him back up at the top after that first flash. So the brushes get busy cleaning men's number two. Stasha. Now, she did have some bad skin. We talked in isolation. She showed me her taped fingers. She's got two of them on the right hand taped up. And you can see her immediately looking down at them. Said it was more preventative than anything else. Mm -hmm. But clearly something she is thinking about. Stasha want to have another go here. Give herself time to rest and then get back on the wall. This is where Stasha, I know she's been working on this side of her game. When she gets frustrated, she's been working with psychologists and trying to just get that mentality. And it's something she is improving, but you can see the frustration there for her. And a whole uh, mental game of what to do when, when your mind is betraying you almost. I go to pieces just watching here in the commentary box, so I, the pressure that they've got to go through. And there is a psychological element to any sport, oh, yeah. and especially climbing, when it feels like you can be as strong as anything and still fall off boulder problems. Yeah. It's hard, too, because uh, you're all alone on the mat. And uh, I'll tell you a story after this try. Right, stash of better. Now we can see the toe hooks. Right hand up. Clock ticks down, she won't worry about that. Foot very low on that boulder on the right. Sorry, on the volume on the right. And now bumps it over. And has her left foot over there still, and it's hard because you don't get enough weight, but is it enough? Oh, she oh was... one or two more inches would be okay, but. Yeah, she could have got the pinch, she could have pulled in then. Very close from Stasha, that's not a top from her. And she's just talking to one of the judges, I think just getting a school card back. Okay, final athletes will come out now. Mark Brand, Lisa Klemp. And this does give Lisa a bit of an opportunity to get back into the running. Look how close she came, got the pinch. Oh. 
heartbreaking in slow motion. Right, so Lisa was in second position. Now she can take advantage here. She might jump over Stasha if she does it quickly. That is Mark Brand. He takes his time. Lisa out to the crimp, cuts loose, swings the left over, misses the foot first time of asking, gets it in now. Oh, that's good. It's crazy because the first two moves are super hard. And, uh, and obviously this last one. She keeps looking at the zone, changing that left hand, fiddling with the feet. Gets the match. Now we'll see who gets the... That would be interesting if you can get it and then get the foot out. I kind of think you need to have the foot out first. And if she gets it farther, it's gonna, this is going to be hard to do with her foot that close to the left. Yeah, and that right foot is not secure. It's right on the edge. Oh. Yeah, it looks like she needs to put that foot a bit more to the right to be able to put a bunch of pressure on it and actually try to push right instead of try to go up. Mark, meanwhile, has been figuring out this sequence. Finds the balance, and now he's got the jump to do. Straight in. And now, will he be positive with this? He is. Oh, went for the pinch. Went for that pinch. And uh, it looked like it kind of just slipped right away, actually. Let's see a replay of that. Right foot down the bottom of the volume. We need to really change that too far to the left at the moment. Some people are saying it's a pretty tough mantle. Yeah, it's super tough. It's hard because there's no foot to push against. You lose all your feet because it's out of the roof. Minute 50. So the last climbers on boulder two. And that will be the midway mark to our competition here both resting. Is that, I've just noticed the light effect on the floor. The, uh, yeah, it's like a snowflake. Yeah, it's sort of like an old Microsoft screensaver going on down there. Right, Mark, slow through the first couple of moves. Way more solid than he was before. Just finds the balance in the corner. Now, will he go for this pinch? We've seen no one else make that work yet. He did change the hand position. So he's got two ways of doing it. Probably another attempt. Lisa is waiting a long time to get going. I'm trying to figure out that bottom sequence. At the start of that boulder, Stasha spent quite a long time looking at it, fell off it a few times before getting back to her high point. Mark rests. I think he'll count down that clock. He knows he can rest in the corner as well. Lisa as well, waiting. 19 seconds left. Mark's in the corner now. Makes the jump out, right? Which one of the two will he use? He's either got the pinch or the shoulder press. There's the buzzer, no falling off from now on. He's going, tried the wrap, thought better of it. Oh, he was so close to that, too. I don't know if it was better to go up with the double shoulder. Like, he, he looked solid on that for the last two tries. So. Lisa looking better on the match. Doesn't shake out, spins and immediately gets the right foot on. And uh, the work, that works, it works. Push with the right, flip it, not too much with the left foot. Oh, yeah, she's, she's actually almost like a little bit too high. Yeah, she's horizontal, trying to find something for that left foot. She now needs to turn 90 degrees on the wall. No top for Lisa. Well, that's two boulders done. 
we'll get a couple of minutes break here, which is an opportunity, Sean, for you to tell us our story about being on the mat. Yeah, so the so yeah, let's watch this replay first. And yeah, she's she's up so high, she needs to almost have both hands on the hold so that she can try to push towards the right. But uh, yeah, being out there for four, you know, sometimes five minutes, obviously during the qualification of a World Cup or a semifinals, one of the hardest things is that you're alone on the mats. And uh, I've heard that expression and I forget uh, who it was, but like I was, um, I read Andre Agassi's book, The Tennis Player, and he describes in a whole chapter how when you're playing in a match in tennis, you're alone on the court. Because you're not allowed to talk to um, your coach, you're not allowed to talk to anyone else. You're only, you're, you're not really supposed to talk to the other player even, and so you're alone in this match. And though their matches last for between, you know, I don't really know the minimum, but it can last for hours. So you're playing this match where you're in your own head for hours, whether you're ahead or behind, or you make a bad ball, you make a great ball. So it's all of this self-talk about working on, you know, what do you do when you hit a bad ball? What do you do when you lose a break point, which is, which is really bad in tennis? What do you do when you win a game? What do you do in this? And it's all about that self-talk. And it's common in climbing too, because, you know, I've had a five minute boulder where I don't get off the ground, or I can't start the boulder. I've had other boulders where I do it in 40 seconds or 20 seconds, whatever it is. And, it's all about when you have those negative experiences, what do you talk about in your head to try to get that next try to be good? Or if you just couldn't even start the boulder, couldn't get zone or whatever, what do you say when you head back to ISO so you can get back in the zone for the next boulder? And the difficult thing is their coaches are watching often, but they're not allowed to tell them. They can't shout the beater out to them. And as a coach, that's got to be difficult. Yeah, and uh, that's like why when you're when you're training and you're training with your coach, with your friends, like where's that line of when you don't figure something out? And oh yeah, let's look, take a look at the results obviously quickly. Well, Stasha stays at the top just via attempts because Lisa is right behind her, and then Alana Yip still in contention. So the top three, not much separating them. And then Tenya down there. Got the top, didn't get the zone on the second boulder. Might that come back to haunt her? And we can see the other two got some work to do. So Stasha leading the way, followed by Lisa, but not by much. And then as we move on to the men, Sam Abazu, two out of two and quick as well. Flash the first one, three attempts on the second. He's followed by Hannes van Dyson, also two tops, but a few more attempts. And Sergio Vadasco in third place. And as we go down, lots of tops, but in different places. Nimrod not getting boulder one done, but managing boulder two. Mark, boulder one, but not two. So everyone's got a bit of work to do. We've got two boulders to go, only halfway through. Um, I don't think the root setters have changed anything, so we might be able to get underway a little quicker, and we are. Yeah, really interesting for the men. Obviously, those two top guys have done two boulders, but the next three all have one boulder, but two zones. And so whoever gets even one zone over the other person, or a top where the other person can't get, this, can't get the top, they move into third place. And then obviously those two people that are in first and second, if they fully drop a boulder and they can't get a zone and the others get a whole boulder, then they could be knocked out of those first and second places. So it's, it's, uh, it's close, it's exciting. Yeah, it's setting up for a nice end to this competition. Now this move, as a climber, I looked at this sequence and I thought, I never want to go near that. It was crazy. I, I thought the first move was going to be like nails hard. And Jens just made it look super easy. And yeah, he's, he's Genya, way at the top of the last boulder. Oh, and that was the toe hook start. Also looked crazy hard. Here, ooh, this is interesting. I would have thought it put out right. Oh, yeah, Genya pushing. We didn't see how she started things off, but yeah, that start, I thought it was awful, but he's making it look quite easy. But this next, those volumes. Yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know if you match, or I think you have to match, oh, oh, oh it could be the, the edge. You do have to get your foot to that foothold, the one in that middle of that face. How you get it there with where your hands are, not sure, but then you are gonna get into that kind of double shoulder, like you were talking about, getting that zone. Yeah, you're right about the left foot, though. I don't know how you get that left foot up, because if he's lay back in the start of it, his body's kind of to the right and he's got to get the left over and it's not a great hold. It's kind of dishy, but small. Yeah, you start here and you almost want to like, it's like that double hip, like, hope you've been practicing frog pose. And, uh, oh, nice, right on his bicep. Yep, yep. He locks it off and gets stood up. But... Control, there you go. That left foot, the toes are going to be screaming and just so much weight through it for so long. Elevated door style, pushing it apart. Would have gotten the zone there though, so he's got to be happy with that. 
Now, probably rest a little bit more, do some brushing, and figure out how you're going to navigate that zone. Crimps to start off with, cruises through those easily into the zone. This yeah, is here, she's looking at it. Yeah, there you go. And then match and push, push, pull. Oh, fuck. A little too quick. You can see rushing maybe through that last sequence. She knows what she has to do now. So I, I actually think she should rest a minute 20 and uh, just go for one more, one more try. Maybe a minute 10 in case you mess up the first move or something, but. So Jens has got that first sequence down now. Squeezing with the core, he falls. Let's watch a replay of this. So she looked really solid. And her foot, funny enough, it's a, the right foot again, similar to that red boulder where they're throwing the foot way out right and they have to put so much pressure on it. They don't need to flip the left hand this time, it's just a standard kind of lock off, a little bit of momentum, and get that slower. But... Yeah, you've almost got to put your thought in your foot, if that makes sense. Second, like you're just thinking about the foot, you then tend to weight it. Yeah, it's... it's hard. Like you need, it needs to be, you need to have weight on it. You need to be pushing right. Quite hard. There you go. Come on, push, push, yeah. So what's pushing her off there? Is it just as she's moving to the right, then the foot goes? Because because it looks solid. It's and hard. It I think it's go. because the hold is not super good, so you can't just put a lot of weight on it. And the foot is kind of far away. If the foot was a foot closer, I think she would have a lot easier time doing it. Or maybe if it was rotated a little more clockwise. So you're, right now it's like you're pushing against like the side of a fridge or something and trying to weight it, but you're just kind of pushing it away from the whole time. Well, she had a long look at that hold. Here she goes again. Keep an eye on Jens as well. He falls and that's his attempt done, so our action switches over to the right. No top, the red light goes on indicating they haven't got that done. Well, interesting, both of those boulders Seem doable, seem close. No one quite figuring out yet. A lot of people are commenting on the lights and the techno playing. Some enjoying it, some saying it's a bit too clubby. I'll leave you guys to work that one out. Let's see a replay again, adjusting that left hand. And always looked a little off balance there. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard because you tried it twice in the last minute instead of running running down the time and just trying it once. And it's always a, a tricky balance of, do you leave enough time in case you slip off the first couple of holds? Or do you just you know risk it all? You just rest another 45 seconds and you have that last burn. Right, Alani on the right, Sergio Vadasca on the left. Just hiking in the beginning. Hey, cruise through that. Double shoulder. And Alana flying up this, get her foot all right, apply lots of pressure. Nice. It looks solid. I think she'll be able to do it. One move away. Oh, the flash there from Alana. Well, that's put her right back up into the podium. Flash by Sergio as well. Oh. He made that look ridiculously easy. He finessed up that bowler, and that is a hard bowler. There's a moment where his head was buried deep in that crack and I thought maybe he's going to pieces here, but he just held on. Is that, that's two flashes or did Alana take a go? I can't remember. I think it was a flash and a fl I think it was two flashes. Was two flashes. Yeah. yeah. Well, two out of two. Yeah, people wondering why uh, that women's bowl was adjusted. It was just removed for the, uh, the men's blue boulder that we had earlier that was put back so they weren't adjusting anything to do with the actual boulder design it was just to get the holes out of the way for the men. Hannes van Dyson, 3 minutes 45, loads of time. And remember that uh, he's ahead by a boulder so if he doesn't get zone it opens the door for Sergio to be in that, on that podium position and Obviously, if he gets to the top, he stays in first place. All right, Camilla, let's see if she has shoulders. We've got anything left in them after the heroics and the other one. So this is a big shoulder move out to the slope and now needs to match it. 
Or will she bump? Oh, creeps into the match. Oh, another flash on the woman's boulder here. And that top part's hard. Quick send from Camilla. She needed it. She was down towards the bottom of the leaderboard. That will have helped. We'll have a look at the scores after this boulder. Oh, oh. Sergio, the slab king, really. If you can call it a slab. I don't know what you call that. Slab-like, with a crack in it. And no, it's not jammable, that crack. <laughs> Whenever I mention any kind of a crack, I don't really mean a crack, I just mean a space between two volumes. Yep, there we go. The hand fist stack. Someone's asking, no, I, I don't think so. It's way too flared, way too wide. No jam to be had, I'm afraid. So Han is by himself after Camilla's flash. And that showed how small that left foot was. Missed it first time. Now gets the toes driven in, pressing underneath that triangular volume. Struggling to get that transition into the next volume. Yeah, I think Sergio went uh, almost like undercling just to be able to stand up. And then once he fix, finished the undercling, then went up a little bit higher before getting into the zone. So Hannes rests and waits. Gets the zone. Yeah, that was a good shot to show how much friction is required for this. Oh, gets the oh that, that was a crazy move. Oh. The speed at which he got his left hand crimped it and then came in with his right, and I thought he was going to hold it. Yeah, he's wiping that left hand in his t shirt. Maybe he got a bit sweaty. You've just joined us. Welcome to Dot Masters 2023. This is the third time we've run this competition. A little bit of a break because of Corona as we watch Hannes. Watch that left hand. Oh, it's a big fire, isn't it? People are asking about the music. Is it is it distracting as an athlete or is it just not part of your thought process when you're out on the mats? Usually we only really hear it in between attempts or when we're in the back. Like as soon as we step on the wall here, like to me everything goes white. And I specifically hear people in the crowd cheering me on, but the rest is just a dull hum. Great shot of the left foot to show how bad it is. Palms with the left and now he's eyeing the crimp up. A bit too tired there. Can you give one more try? He's got to be jumped straight back on the wall though. Missed it the first time, gets it the second. Just the toe of his climbing shoes. Will he change it? They're just kind of go with the same thing here. Maybe a little hip bar. Oh yeah, there you go, there's the hip. A match feet. Ooh. Well, match back. Yeah, it's hard to get that left hand with the right foot on. Oh! Crazy, you can see the sweat just on his hands on the volume there. Yeah, that right hand sliding off, that will have cost him some skin. He's only got one boulder to go though. And we're halfway through boulder number three. So let's watch that again. I think this is his last attempt. Yeah, I didn't get it. It's so unfortunate when he, well, I don't know, caught a dry fire, sort of a wet fire <laughs> with yeah, the sweat. Just, uh... I think he did, what, three tries in the last minute. That's just hard. Lynn van die Meer back onto the mats. Hasn't had a top in a bit. Easy toe to start off with. Nimrod straight into that left foot. Again, the foot the undercling too. Now the double shoulder. Let's see what he's going to do. Foot up, knee. Ooh. It's ugly, but it works. Yeah, he's trying to get higher on the volume. How did Sergio do this? Yeah, just like that, yeah? Oh! 
looked so casual going up. Crazy. I thought he was going to do it. I thought he was just going to kill it there. I mean, the left crimp is good. It's, it's from when I looked at it, anyway, good in terms of these guys. Good. I you thought, know, it's yeah. Pretty positive. Maybe he just didn't get up quite high enough and he just didn't get his fingertips over the top of it. We sort of enter the chess style part of this competition. The audience attention is drawn to the wall. We're all fascinated. Hope you're enjoying it at home. Lynn Vandermeer on the right, Nimrod Marcus on the left. Let's watch Lynn as she eyes up the next crimp. There you go, got the zone. Yeah, eyeing the foot. There you go, it's almost full vertical. That's why it's so hard to stand on. Gotta get high here. Yeah, so you're, as you stand up into it, you, you, instead of pressing against it, you have to sort of engage the yeah, foot. Yeah, you're trying to engage your toe, but because it's almost full vertical, it's hard. It's pushing you towards the left when you're trying to go towards the right. That knee looks bomber there from Nimrod once again. There you go. Nails the <laughs> Well, the hype man hypes them up. Unfortunate fall on that last attempt. I think he would be kicking himself if he didn't get it done the next go. So some quick sends here. Let's watch again. Yeah, just that right foot stuck that time. That right pinch. It's also crazy because Sergio, Hannes, and now Nimrod, they all have two tops. And so Sam, with the top, would run out in first place. And uh, if Sam only gets zone, there'll actually be a almost a four-way tie for first, at least when we just talk about tops and zones. Obviously, those tries are going to be the tiebreaker for now. Yeah, it's going to be interesting coming into the last boulder. It's all to play for for everyone. Someone's asking how flared the volumes are in real life. Very flared, the blue volumes, you can see. So not a bad start. Big toe catch there. Nice and steady into the first couple of crimps. Big move up with the left hand, and that was the whole the foothold Sean was talking about. See how it's vertical. From that angle, it looks like there's a ledge. It's not. Pitch is higher. Oh, nice. Gets it. Still a hard match, and the whole the finish hold is good, but you still have to control the swing. Then Vandermeer finishes things go. off. Gets the top. Oh. Great work from me. I was about to say, no one's dropped it from once they've got the right hand. No one's dropped the match yet. I don't. Oh no, yeah, I don't think anyone's dropped it yet. Don't think so, no. But uh, it's not a gimme move at the speed they're climbing in. Right, two to go. Sam Avazu will be out next. Stasho as well. Two at the top of the leaderboard. Stasho comes out looking focused. <laughs> Can't see the judge. Finds him eventually. Well, we know how good Sam is on those big, powerful camper star moves. Let's see what his footwork is on form this evening. I wouldn't be surprised to see a flash here by Sam. Immediately spotted the right way of doing that beginning. Look how accurate cool. he is. Matches the volume, pressing out with the palm. Not fully correct yet, but there you go. Sean called the flash, and Sam at the moment is playing ball. Oh, he's going to go for the double clutch. <sighs> Does it though? Right, one move, Sam. Come on, and Sean is a genius. Let's wow. see. Doesn't even put his foot up. He's going to go straight to the top of his right. Oh, oh no! Oh, no! Ah, oh, so close. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh... Come on, Stasha. Easy into the first one. Needs to match it, of course, and it's not a gimme. But it is a flat. Two flat flashes, nose. yeah. Yeah. Flashed one and three there. So a flash by Stasha will keep her in first place. So Stasha leaves the stage, and Sam came close to a flash as well. Last hole, he just missed. Now it'll be interesting to see if he rethinks the last move by saying, okay, I fell, but it depends how close it was. He actually was pretty close to sticking it. So if he thinks, yeah, okay, I just need to try harder, he might try exactly the same sequence, or he might think, 
oh, actually, it was a little bit too hard. Maybe I should put my right foot up and go to the finish in the left hand. Yeah, will he start questioning himself here? Sam worked hard in the French Championships, the French Nationals. A long time to brush that left crimp. He knows how vital that is. It's kind of the only hold on the route apart from the final one. Look how precise he is with that left foot. I wish I could climb like that. Matches now, that's all he's standing on. Double clutches again, and the last move, trying it again. Right hand up. Try hard. Foot just smearing on the wall. Oh, he was better too, but uh, not quite good enough. That's brutal. Uh, yeah, will he go for a third time or will he put his right foot up? That's super hard. Yeah, when you tickle the hold like that, you think, well, okay, just a little bit just further. Just a little bit closer. Just try a little bit harder. Like, and he was a little bit better that time too, but... Yeah, and I don't think he's going to have two goes at this because he rested a long time before this one. I think this is only his second... That was that his second was go That was his second on, try, yeah. So Sam, resting his way through, has another look at the crimp. He's certainly thinking about that top. Maybe he'll change things, but I think he might only get one chance unless he falls and then quickly jumps back on. Now he turned his body a little to the left there, which implies he might think about the right foot. I think he saw it there. And so, yeah, if he's facing away now, he's going to dry his hands, wait another 20 seconds, chalk, and probably change the way he did the last move. And I hope we see a top here. Good to see the athlete's thought process. Clock ticks down towards 20 seconds, here we go. That volume, I honestly thought the first move would be the hardest one. And it, everyone's just cruising. No, everyone just cruises it, but... Sticky shoes, it turns out, it helps. High left foot, immediately up. So confident through the bottom part of this route. Hasn't used knees like we saw Nimrod, Nimrod use. Quick double clutch, and looking at it, I want to put in a drop knee actually, but now he's going to jump. Oh, this time Sticks it works. It <laughs> and a one armor to finish things off. Well, attempt three, he definitely considered changing that beat, and then I thought, you know what, I'll just a little bit higher, a little bit further. It's almost like he looked at the, the right foot hold and he wanted to put in a drop knee and not lean against it. But he said quickly, he's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to jump for it. And uh, better and better each try, so it gets a third try. And he'll stay in first place. Yeah, that's some intelligent climbing from Sam, actually. It's impressive to watch him sort of pace himself throughout that. Right, final athlete out. Mark Brand and Lisa Clem will enter. Stash it. did us have a load of favour by flashing that first boulder, sorry, the third boulder. Can Lisa keep up with her? We'll get updated on the scores. This is boulder number three out of four. Scheduled to finish round about, well, the climbing round about 9 p.m. and then the award ceremony will be later. And Lisa gets off the ground. This is the left hand. Mark gets the toes in, pressing under the volume, and yeah, it's a bit awkward. Lisa as well, cleaning that crimp off. So early falls for both athletes. Shower of the brushes here as well. Really, uh, the, that curved angle of the brush itself is brilliant for mm -hmm. cleaning holes. Like, yeah, I know that really, sounds like really a silly good. thing to say, but it's, yeah, I like it. If you, if you brush, you'll know what I'm talking about. Lisa with the toe hooks into the pinchy crimps. See the thumb pressing against the volume. She won't have been awarded the zone last time, I don't think. And she won't be that time either. That's hard. It looks like she's a little bit uncomfortable on those two crimps, and, and need to get up. Needs to get up a little bit higher just to stick that zone. Mark pulls back on. 
left hand before the toe, like everyone's done, bumps the hand up. And this is where he started looking a bit shaky before. He's got to get himself into a position where he can pop for that crimp and it's, it's not going to be from there. Chat, if you're listening, keep talking to us. Say hello. What's your favourite moments of the competition so far? Someone's saying Lisa looks a bit tired. Yeah, actually does. And sometimes that's where that competition experience comes in because she's very young, hasn't had a lot of big comps under her belt and maybe she's starting to feel the fatigue from yesterday's quali and semis. It's also just really hard uh, coming out last. She knows the competitors ahead of her have done the boulder. She most likely knows that Stasha flashed the boulder and so you come out right, right away right after Stasha and you're like, okay, well, I should be able to flash this boulder. And then it's hard because I mean, you can't get it and you haven't gotten the zone. Then like, do you start to doubt yourself? Then are you doing it wrong? Or do you try harder? Am I tired? And so all of these, again, that self-talk just comes into play and you just have to be like, no, I can do it. And you just have to get back on the boulder. All right, Mark reaches around way higher up, better position just to snatch into that side pull. Right leg's not going to help him, he wanted it on something. Figures out the double clutch, but didn't commit to it fully. Yeah, I think he could have, uh, he was thinking about sort of creeping over to it a bit more, but... But got the zone, so now there's a four-way tie per second in the men, with all two tops, or you know, one top and... Two tops, there you go, two tops and three zones, or something like that. Yeah, and people asking in the chat about uh, what the scorecards mean. Sean will go through exactly what those blue and yellow mm -hmm. markers mean when we see the scoreboard, because it's difficult to talk about it unless it's in front of us. But yes, for people who don't know, we'll go through exactly what everything means when we see it. So the photographers all gathered at the top of the wall. Audience down below, sitting 600 of them in here. Anyway, I think, as Lisa into the crimps. This is where she's looked uncomfortable before, and she's running out of time now, so cannot fall. Up with the left, makes it work. Gets the zone. Do you see the foot out right? But this is the move, it's so easy to drop. Mark falls. She did it really well, though. Hopefully, she can match it with that last hold. Slow in, nearly oh, nice. dropped it. Wow, what a, what a change, like the... Didn't look super strong on her first couple of tries, and then right there, her last try, she rested, you know, almost two minutes, and then just knew she had, she had one last try, got the zone, and she actually, like, destroyed the top of that bowler. Her feet didn't even swing, so when she got the last hole, she didn't even swing. Well, she's very solid. Root setters will adjust these boulders again. Again, they're not making adjustments to the design of it, it's just to get certain holds out of the way of other boulders. And we're about to see the score. So Sean, we'll be able to see who wins it, but just talk to us about what they mean. Yeah, so if there's green on the scoreboard, it means that they, they completed it. And then the number is how many tries they had. And then the yellow is if they got to the zone. And again, how many tries it got to the zone. If there's just a little dash, it means they didn't get. So obviously your Stasha has two greens, has two tops and three zones. And you can see it on the right. It does say two tops, three zones with a three Z. Then the two, the second two is how many tries for the tops and the last number that three is how many tries for the zones so then you can kind of go the visual representation is kind of just nice because then you see where they got their tops but if you want the actual score you look at the very far right numbers and it's you know two tops three zones and then two tries for the tops and three tries for those zones so those attempts that's where we can sort of uh sort of separate them I don't know what I'm talking about. It. We, that's how we separate them if they're all draw. So if everyone gets tops, then mm -hmm. we go down to the attempts. For Sam Avazu, well, you can see three greens for Sam Avazu, way out in front. Sergio just behind. So it's really going to come down to this fourth boulder, Nimrod Marcus, after that. And Nimrod being pushed down because of those attempts, because he's got the same number of tops and the same number of zones. That was a really good explanation, Sean, honestly. Like, I try to explain that all the time and I do a rubbish job of it, so thank you. It's funny how uh, the green and the yellow is actually a very nice visual representation for how they're doing, and then you get to know exactly on which boulder and how many tries. Uh, before, they, before the visual representation was bad, and then whoever came up with this really, uh, really nailed it. Yeah, they've done well. 
Yeah, well, thank you to everyone here at Doc Masters. Brilliant competition so far. Great atmosphere. And all those uh, Dutch climbers out there, thank you for being so welcoming to your gym. Oh, it's us. Hello. We don't know when it's going to flick to us, by the way. So, you know, if we're doing something embarrassing, apologies if I'm picking my nose. Uh, we've got one final boulder to go here this evening before we're going to name our Doc Masters winner for 2023. My name is Matt Groom. This is Sean McCall. And um, we've been having a good time up here in the commentary box and hopefully you guys have been enjoying watching back home. Right, Sean, coming into this fourth boulder, mm -hmm. Stash right in front for the women, yep. Sam for the men, but mm -hmm. still got to keep it together if there's a lot to play for here. Yeah, and it's uh, it's closer for the women because they all have two boulders. And so if they one of them can really just send the last boulder, uh, Alana obviously climbs before Stasha, so if Alana can put pressure on Stasha by just completing the boulder, it means that Stasha will have a certain amount of tries to be able to complete the boulder. Whereas on the men's side, if Sam tops the boulder, it doesn't matter what anyone else does, he will be our winner. Okay, well there you go. Sean has laid it out nicely for us. We're in the final moments of our competition here in Dot Masters. First athletes out, they qualified in last place for the finals. That's a long boulder for the men. Starts down in the cave, comes all the way to the top, traversing from right to left as you look at the wall. Then you're swinging. And this is this interesting downwards dino that every time I see one of these, I, I, I think, hang on a sec, I've read the rules, it definitely says you can't do that, but it is a bit of a sort of, not a grey area, but it could be interpreted perhaps. Yeah, and again, like, uh... It, it looks like a downwards jump. It is technically a downwards jump. But the way that it's set is where the weight is going onto your legs. And so it, to me, should be allowed in competition. Whereas if you're going and you're loading your arms, something like that, and it's downwards, it shouldn't be allowed. Again, this is one of those areas where um, the rules probably need to be a little bit clearer, or there needs to be just more, more guidelines, or if the people think think that it shouldn't be, then those types of boulders should be completely removed. Yeah, it looks dramatic, doesn't it? But you're right about the injury thing. It's obviously what we want to avoid. Complicated men's boulder. I mean, I look at that and I have no idea how to climb it. Mm. Such a big swing. One thing that makes these swings a lot nicer uh, for your feet is see how her feet are landing on fiberglass holds. That is the number one thing. You either need to be landing on a volume or fiberglass. Because if you land on, uh, I guess it's like polyurethane, like a climbing hold, like old school, it like hurts because it's so much more dense. It's really about the density of the holds. So as long as you're landing on fiberglass or wood, wood volume, fiberglass volumes, or fiberglass holds, it's actually, it's like nice because it's it's almost like it rings, and so the again, the, basically the density of it, it's uh, it absorbs a lot of the impact. Such good knowledge. This is why I love having an athlete here with me because they can just give these little insights. She makes it work this time and has the zone. Big jump to the side. Oh, I thought she was going to get that right away. So it disappeared into the blackness there. Yeah, it drives me crazy when I go to a gym and there's a there's some sort of run and jump, and they stop on a polyurethane, and I'm just like. Uh, sorry, like I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying. To. So, can you feel the shock come through you? Well, you just like imagine just jumping on a climbing hold, and you do this big swing, and you have to stop, and it, yeah, it'll just go through your body. Whereas here, we watch Jenya, she stops, and it's it looks like comfy. It uh, like it's super hard, I can tell you that. But at least her feet, like it doesn't it doesn't absorb through her whole body, and then she still has to stick that hole and stop the momentum. But it looks like a really nice uh, swing. People are appreciating your insights here. Science class with Professor McCall, so I must have commented. She did it. Oh, and she's actually stopping with her left hand on the arete too. And sneaking. Where, where she has her toe. She would stop there with her left hand. And uh, that looked like it was actually a lot nicer too. Yeah, she might have wanted to drag that left foot across the wall a little bit more to release it. Look at Ian's here. Shoulders screaming as he tries to get the sloper. He will get that zone. And after that, it's anyone's guess. You can see the big white marks of chalk. So I guess some kind of like a layback push kind of thing there. Yeah, again, like the men's third ball, there was that uh, weird off with balancey one. And so they're, they're finishing on a power boulder. And you can see there he's in a double shoulder. Needs to do, I think basically a hand foot match, match, jump to the left and then swing his feet. 
Well, the MC's counting them down. I guess that's the clock. It's disappeared momentarily for us. Here we go, our last attempts. So good now. What's she gonna do? Go for the toe hook method again. Maybe bring her right hand off, or just jump into it a little bit more. That's tricky. Goes for a little foot. Yeah, so no top for her. But Jen, uh, Jen's got it though. It's the jump and toe hook actually. Well, Unable that, to do that. Yeah, it's a big ask for the men. It's a very powerful boulder after a full set. Right, so their comp is done. They'll get to watch the rest of the athletes compete now. Let's see a replay. This is as close as he came. It slapped that bit of chalk, but way off making it stick. So next up is Alani Yip and Sergio Verdasco. And Sergio is in the running for a podium here. And he could be in the running for the win, possibly. Yeah, yeah, if Sergio can top this boulder, then he's gonna put pressure on everyone else with two tops to also top the boulder. And it'll be a pressure on Sam to actually only get the zone. And then we're gonna be in that ball territory, the tries, which I didn't memorize, so I couldn't tell you. That's all right, we'll forgive you on that one. All right, let's see a line on this. Sergio's doing good though. And it's difficult with a swing like that because you've got nothing to really kick off. She's no, just she's using fully, the swing. Fully swinging. And uh, she just missed actually the feet that time, so she'll have to readjust and actually maybe go into the jump a little bit hotter so that your feet are more swinging so you can really conserve that momentum. Here she goes again, does use the wall a little bit this time, now finds a better swing. Very blind, that hold. It's obvious for us on TV because we're looking at it for her slightly around the corner. Anna also has a, a, degree in, a degree in engineering, so she for sure is going over all those formulas in her head. She knows exactly what she needs to do, she's just trying to get her body to do it. There's a lot of engineers and people like that in climbing. I was quite surprised when I first started, like a lot of mm -hmm. technical mm -hmm. people. Yeah. yeah, she's built race cars with her dad. Getting closer, getting closer. Yeah, she's got the range now, hasn't she? That was a bit of a smile there as she touched it. Sergio powering through. Font-style boulder, really. Big slopers, and he's got that left hand. That was skin or right vice, right peck causing him issues. There we go. The left hand on the right, too. I think she should... I was going to say jump into this, but hopefully she can make it work this way. Releasing that left toe is hard in this position. Oh, there you go, at the same time. How's this last move? Oh, heel look, no? Oh, I don't even need the heel look, nice. Well, Alana finishes things off well. So good to see her in that kind of form. So yeah, I think it was about four, maybe five tries which means that Stasha is going to have to complete the boulder, but she has at least five tries. Okay, so a bit of breathing room for her. This was the final move, got the heel in, and a big celebration at the top for Alani Yip. And that will give her a lot of confidence coming into the next couple of competitions. Sergio rests as the minute marker comes up. A lot of appreciation for Alana on the chat. Do let us know when you see an athlete do something that you really appreciate. They'll read back through these comments and I'm sure they'll love reading those. So slopers all the way now. Oh, drops the pinky, gets it back on, full palm. Almost a knee under there. Right, well, let's see the second half of this boulder then. We haven't really watched this. Yeah, look. Yeah, I thought that was a toe for sure. Oh, I should have gotten this toe. Didn't have the, the reach. He really needed to put in a toe up there. Now, he's just put on liquid chalk. He's got 20 seconds to go. It should dry in time. <laughs> he's having to work at it a bit, though. 14 seconds. Remember, he's got to be pulled on the wall, off the ground, before that clock ticks down. 10 seconds. 
waves to the crowd as he gets going with five seconds to go. And he's off. This is his last attempt on this boulder and there is no stopping on this one. Oh, powering out, I think. A good effort though, he did get the zone on the last one, uh, which means that uh, Hennis and Nimrod both have to get zone in order to pass him or stay at equal. And again, I don't remember the tries there. Yeah, we'll see. I'm gonna pull out the score, in fact, so we can have a little look at it. It's hard when it's so close like this, unless you have the scores in front of you, it's, it's quite hard to remember. Uh, who has to do what when it comes to tries. But I do know that uh, Stasha was ahead by a, a Valana by a few tries, I think like four. Um, we're lucky, we do actually get to see scores um, uh, in front of us, so we're just gonna be able to pull that up. Yeah, I'm just having a look, I just clicked on the wrong button. Right, give me a swinging to get this powerful boulder on the way. And Hannes van Dyson will want to finish on a high in front of his home crowd. Right. Camilla swings, not using the wall like Alana did, just generating that from her hips and body. She was a lot better on that try too, because the try before, she actually didn't try to go to the corner with her left hand. She had both of her hands kind of going toward that zone. So I think she realized that she's going to have to go to the zone and grab the corner of the wall with her left hand. Off she goes again. Touches the markers with both feet and immediately drop them. Starts to swing. Touched it that time. Now, so far, everyone who's touched it has got it next go. Hannes starts to thug his way left. Two thirty on the clock. DJ ramps things up a little bit as the light show continues flickering around this wonderful gym. Camilla swinging, launches, and there we go. I cursed her, touched it, but didn't make it stick. Sorry. Hannes is having a long look at the second half of this boulder, trying to work out the toes or the heels for later. Perhaps Camilla is back on. Not quite getting her hips quite far back from the wall when she lands. Hannes in the classic climber's pose there, looking up at the wall, shaking his hands down. He comes into the bottom of the cave. Camilla again throws herself upwards. Tries are getting better and better. It's cool to see her do it. And now we can figure out she's going to do the jump or the toe hook. Or just an easy cross through. Actually, it probably did that the nicest I've seen. Yeah, different method. And then, is she going to put her heel in or just go up like Alana did? Just straight up, pinch, heel hook, finish. Oh, brilliant from Camilla. So and I'll actually move her into. And in, into second place, uh, we still obviously have Stasha. Stasha with a zone would knock uh, Camilla to third place, and Stasha has actually seven tries to get the top uh, for the win. Uh, also, depending on what uh, Lisa is. Interesting to see how Camilla sort of ramped things up throughout the competition. She didn't get any tops on the first two boulders, and the flash on number three seemed to kick her into gear. She just got boulder four down as well. So obviously Stasha is second last, and then uh, Lisa is last, uh, but Lisa can also win this competition. It just depends if Stasha does the last boulder and how many tries she does it in. If Stasha does the boulder in three tries or less, then Lisa will be playing for second place. All right, well, there we go. Three athletes to go. A little bit of a pause here. Hannes is waiting. He's got six seconds. Let's see if he's managed to get some power back into those shoulders, up into the slopers. The skin will be hurting at this point in a comp. Swinging, nearly dropped it, keeps on the wall. It's a hard boulder to finish too. Yeah. So powerful. 
Oh, he's leaving nothing behind here. Out with the left, just misses it. All right, three athletes to go. Let's look at the scores. Alani hit first position, as Sean was saying, but then things get very interesting. Camilla Moroni, Stashigo, Lisa, all in contention. For that top spot, what a way to finish the competition. It's exciting. And the men, Sam Mavazu, is out in front on the mats in a minute after Nimrod. So yeah, with Nimrod up right now, uh, if Nimrod does not get a top, uh, Sam actually gets a free four plus minutes to do whatever he wants and he wins, which is a special place in bouldering competition. But uh, yeah, we'll see how Nimrod gets on on this boulder. Yeah, he won't know that though. He won't know it's his victory lap. Or that. Funny enough, like, eh, he, he probably will. Okay. He most likely knows he's the only, to do, the only one to do three. And so he knows that these have to do the last boulder. I mean, it's hard. We don't know if they're actually getting access to the results in between rounds. Uh, in World Cups, they're shown the results in between rounds. So Sam would have actually known, okay, if no one does the last boulder, he kind of knows no one's done the last boulder yet. But it's, uh, yeah, still. Yeah, he'll have an idea of what he's got to do. But it depends on that man, Nimrod, and he takes a big fall down. That is Lynn van der Met. Misses the jump to the right. Quite reachy, that men's boulder. As a few people have pointed out. Yeah, I also think it's just hard because they've been competing now for what, almost two hours? And after that, you know, you go in, you go out, you have to do this like super powerful boulder. It's hard. Yeah, it is difficult. So we last couple of athletes though. After this there will be the award ceremony and Sean will be going down onto the mats to interview the winner. We haven't finished yet as Nimrod comes up to the slopers. Can he control the swing this time? It does way better from him. Now brings the right in. This is where things get really difficult. This smash out to the left. Hits the mark, but not in the best place. I think it's better the further on that you go. Lynn Meanwhile is looking at that. I always wonder why um, why athletes aren't allowed to tick boulders. Like if they remove the tick mark between rounds. Um, I don't know the like the reasons behind it. I guess it's just to make everything sort of like straightforward and simple. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really sure, but I'm sure it has something to do with cheating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As a lot of rules are. Yeah, it's a very good point. All right, Lynn oh, turns around. exactly the same way as those are really, really nice. Same as Camilla. But this last move isn't the easiest. It's a long way to go. She's tall. You can see how far it is. Almost a full body length. She goes up. And sticks it. Well, that will please her and her home crowd. Lynn finishes things off well. Right, Nimrod. We'll have a big play on how the rest of this competition falls out, but no one has really come close to this boulder yet. No, the closest we saw, I think, was uh, maybe Hannes, who got out past the zone, tried to heal up, and... Yeah, it should have got a toe, maybe, but yeah. for the healing. But again, you still have, like, two, three more moves left. I think it was Sergio. Yeah, maybe Sergio, yeah. Someone definitely got out there, though. So we know the zone at least is gettable. Marcus has 16 seconds. Hasn't looked too close so far, just not quite getting the snatch to the left. Yeah, gonna need some sort of miracle for Nimrod to do this boulder. But... Right, off we go. go. Look how bad that hole is, it's horrible. Yeah, burning out there from Nimrod, but he gave it everything. Yeah, people are asking it. Sean McCall is sitting next to me. He's injured, sadly not competing, but 
How wonderful has his insights been? And it has been genuinely fascinating, Sean. Honestly, like you've said things I've never heard someone say in a competition. It's really good. Oh, Especially good. the fiberglass down jump thing is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if you ever see them jumping to a non-fiberglass or non-wood, you like give them, give them crap. Yeah. Right? Well, I'll tell them. <laughs> Not which I have any impact, but I'll have a go. Right, Sam Avazu is well winner. Winner. He already won. So this is his victory lap here. And we know he's good at these powerful moves. It would be nice for him to, to obviously top his boulder, to finish with four, and uh, I'm sure he'll try everything. Looking strong through these moves too. He's so good at this kind of climbing. Well, there we go. Easy for him at the moment, and he gets the toe. Yeah, toe here. And then you have to move your feet and then press to the finish. Come on, well, Sam. To move the feet. I, I want to see a flash with this so much. Come on. Cross you want it finish. anyway. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> so close to the flash. And Stasha, though. Now, her, this is important for Stasha. Up she goes. Oh, She's on a go. flash attempt. And that is her winning. That is think? her, yeah. yeah. Stasha just won it for the women, actually. It was a first or second try. So. Big win for Stasha. Yeah, and I think she might know it by now as well. She gets a hug straight away. She does know. Well, still interesting climbing going for both Sam and Stasha. Oh, not Sam, Sam came close. Stasha got it done on the flash. And that puts her into the lead. And as we know, of course, Stash, uh, Sam is so one already. So it was already. a flash to Stasha. Uh, which means that, um, obviously our last climber, Lisa, can move up to second place. And let's go, let's run through these numbers. We do have them open in front of us. So uh, Lisa does have three tries to complete the boulder. And then it just depends if she does the um, the zone first try or not. Then she technically could have four tries to do the boulder. But um, can't we talk about second place here? And that'll be to second place. Yeah, Lisa unfortunately cannot win. Stasha has secured that with three flashes actually. And on that last boulder, the flash it, especially with the with the swing, is probably the hardest boulder to flash. Yeah, really impressive from Stasha. Well, Cheetex victory. Meanwhile, Sam almost got a flash. He kind of back in to get it next go if he hasn't burnt himself out. But he's got a lot of time to rest. And coming that close, I think he'll wind down the clock here a bit. Wait till he's really ready to go. Sam, three out of three at the moment. Will he make it? Four out of four. Flash the first boulder. Three attempts on the second one. Three on the third. And he's on his second here on boulder number four. So only a few minutes left of our competition here. Interesting semi-finals yesterday. Really good finals tonight. I've enjoyed every second of this. And Sam is just running down that clock, making sure he's chalked up and ready and rested. That toe made all the difference, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, hole. it was crazy. I mean, you could tell just from the beginning, through the moves even up into the zone. He looked super strong. He was really high on all the holds, and he got the toe hook, did the next two moves, flipped down to the undercling, and I'm curious what they had in mind for the last move. Maybe it's a press off the right arm, but he tried to go up with his right arm, and uh, he'll know if it goes by basically the way that he fell. And so if he tries it again, it means that he knows that it's good enough. And if he tries to readjust, it's because that hold was not good enough. And then he'll try to go with his left hand. And he really has run the clock down. He was on minute 40 when he started resting. So it'll only be his second try on the boulder. 12 seconds to go. Here goes Sam. Up Sam goes, make that move look easy. Brings the right in. There goes the timer. Oh, he slips with the left. Well, he waited oh, a long hard. time, but it's still a victory for Sam Abazu. With Mark he rested Brand. three minutes too, so like his, his skin was okay, and that's just a hard boulder, you guys. Yeah, no one topping it out so far. Him coming the closest. Mark Brand is up next, followed by Lisa Klemp. And although they can't win, they can, well, Mark can't make an impact on the podium. No, uh, not the podium. Uh, did Nimrod get zone? I forget. He did. 
I'm pretty sure he did get zone. Yeah, it hasn't been awarded in our school. Oh yeah, there we go. Updated, yeah. So, so Mark can move into fourth place, I believe. Uh, unfortunately, can't get on the podium. But uh, yeah, all eyes on Lisa now. Yeah, Lisa could still get second place. She starts the swing. She's got the reach to kick off that volume. Oh, and straight Six. into it. Might be a flasher, you guys. Come on. All right, this is Come massive on, for the go. podium. This is the hard way to do it. That, and she does oh. it. I, I, I hope she gets this last move. Well, this is going to push Camilla off the podium if she can get it. Eyes it up. It's a long way, though, but it's good if you can get it. Oh, and she hesitates. She was almost going to go for that heel. She's trying to get a She's knee. She's going to rest now. That's a good knee bar to spot that. But it hasn't she taken just, a lot of the left. Yeah, just needs to just get up there, just commit to this move. Oh, oh no, she falls. I think if she hadn't hesitated, she would have had the power to get through there. So now she can rest and have a go. We update the scores here. Camilla Moroni will be watching nervously. Oh, she does have another three tries, and uh, she can get in 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 the next three tries. She'll actually move into second place. Yeah, well, that zone has pushed Camilla out of the top three, so Lisa is guaranteed a medal. Oh, look at that, yeah, yeah. Will it be silver or bronze? That was how close she came to the silver. She's still got time. Mark, one of the taller athletes here, so anyone who thought the boulder might be reachy, it won't be a problem for him, certainly, if it is a reachy boulder. And that's blowing the holes. As Sean told us earlier, you can't brush them, can't jump and brush them. <laughs> jump and brush. He brings the right hand up, nearly loses it, keeps it together, gets a heel, a back heel on that. It's a big move. Oh, and it actually looked like he almost got high enough, but even just to get through those first moves, get to the zone, get off the zone is, as we saw, like extremely powerful. So Mark throws the brush down, had a long look at his skin on the right hand. Meanwhile, Lisa Take takes time, the time. actually. I can't believe how easily she did that first move. Yeah, and a flash it like that. I mean, look, there is for sure an element of luck with a jump like that sometimes, but having said that, how good she is at flashing boulders. Yeah. Starts the kick in order to kick off the wall. There finds the wall. Oh, had it, but dropped it a bit high on the hold. And Melita is fighting for a silver medal here. She's already got the bronze. And points means prize money, so it's all to play for. Kicks back. Oh, misses that hold. It almost like she's swinging too much, but uh, yeah, she is just missing that zone hold a little bit. Elisa goes again. Oh, this is the try. This is her last try and her last attempt to try to get into that second position. Oh. Gets to the last move, this is gonna be a nail biter. Yeah, this is it. This is for oh, the silver medal. Strong. She's run out of time. It's all about this move. No! Oh, and she tried to go up with a heel. Because the first try just didn't really work for her, but uh, unable. She, but she gets, she walks away with a bronze medal, so. Yeah, and that is so impressive. Considering her lack of experience with comps of this size against these competitors, that is a fantastic bronze medal for her. And what a semi-final yesterday. She'll remember that for a long, mm -hmm. long time. Well, Sean, you're going to have to leave us because mm -hmm. you need to go and find our winners okay. down on the mat. So I'll talk to oh, sorry, I'll talk to these guys. See you in a minute. Good luck with that, and come back and join me. Cool. Okay, so Sean's going off to try to find some winners to interview. We'll take a little pause in proceedings. Don't worry, I won't just fill the air. But we will have a look at the scoreboard again just to see the story of this competition. And there we go. So Stasha. 
three flashes on the, her way to a gold medal. Just that boulder number two. But Alana, look how close she came. Three tops as well. Same amount of zones, but it came down to attempts between those two women. And then Lisa, battling for that silver medal, gets the bronze. And honestly, that is such an impressive performance from her. Remember, four flashes out of four yesterday in the semi-finals. Camilla Moroni, after that, Lynn Vandermeer, Genia Kazbekova, finishing things off down at the bottom of the leaderboard. So that is our podium places. That's what's confirmed here at Doc Masters 2023. Meanwhile, let's have a look at the men's. Pop up in a couple of seconds. Sam Avazu, what a performance from him. That flash on Boulder 1 shows his intent. Three attempts on Boulder 2, three on Boulder 3, but no one in that field finishing off that difficult Boulder 4. Behind him, Sergio Vadasco. Nimrod Marcus finishing off the podium. Hannes van Dyson, Mark Brand, and Jens de Lille after that. So what a competition. What a set of boulders. I thoroughly enjoyed that. And I hope you'll agree with me back at home that Sean McCall's insights, especially his knowledge of the rules, which turns out I need to reread. Really impressive from him. Thank you so much to Sean. Of course, I'll say thank you to him in a minute when he joins me. Don't go anywhere if you're watching this. We've got interviews with the winners coming up. And of course, the podium round about 9.30 that's scheduled for. But after Sean's interview and we say goodbye, we will uh, cut and let the MCs do the talking from then. It's probably a good time to shout out some of our sponsors. Main sponsors being NKBV, the co-organizer, and La Sportiva, our main sponsor here at Doc Martyrs 2023. Axis Unit Holds, Unleashed Climbing, Ibex Holds, Virgin Grip, Xcult, Contact, Elevation Climbing, Physiofabric, Climb Lab, The Circuit Climbing, App Climbing, and Bjolza Buten. Thank you to our sponsors who make this possible. Thank you to all the staff here at the Boulder Hall Energy Haven as well for looking after all weekend. Cheers, Epic TV, for watching along. And as Stash has won it, I'm going to shout out an Epic TV video as well. Go and watch her climb in Fontainebleau where she does her hardest ever boulder, 8B+. Plus. One worth watching if you still want to do some climbing having watched all of that. So as you can see, the podium is being set up and don't worry, I'm not gonna to talk to you throughout this part. We're just waiting for Sean to find a cameraman, a microphone and a winner, which is more difficult than it sounds. Our crowd there really getting behind it as the MCs hype it up and big up to the MCs as well. Very difficult job. I can sort of hide up here in the commentary box, but they're right out in the front of everyone. That's our podium being manoeuvred into place. And it is a really great place to climb here. I've luckily enough had the opportunity to climb in the last two days. The training facility upstairs where the athletes isolation is and go back and watch the start of this broadcast if we haven't seen that because we took you guys behind the scenes to show something we don't see in IFSC comps, how they warm up. And they gave us a bit of an interview as well, which I didn't think they would. Things are a little bit more relaxed here at these invitational competi competitions, but it doesn't mean it's not important because this is the first time that they get to see if their training on the off-season has paid off. And remember, that IFSC circuit is coming. Next week's studio block, Quiff coming up after that, so we have a run of competitions and then a bit of a break for the athletes to tweak their training regime. And we are straight into Japan for the first round of the IFSC season. We stay in Asia for three weeks and then move on to America before returning to Europe and finishing things off. Someone's saying we should do a gym tour video. We should do indeed. I just need a cameraman or a Teresa Corti to commentate. <laughs> and then we can make that happen for Epic TV. Maybe next time. Thank you to everyone who did comment. We love reading your comments. Gives us an idea of what you guys aren't understanding, what you are, what needs explaining more, and just good to see your questions coming through as well. In fact, I'll scroll back and see if there's any questions I can answer. Sean has left me here, so my climbing expert has gone. A lot of people saying they enjoyed the competition. They've got sweaty hands. Honestly, if you haven't got sweaty hands when you're watching one of these things, there is something wrong with you as a climber. What a start to the season. Yeah, people saying it's a great gym. 
Someone's asking if I commentate on the IFSC comps. I do. I'm lucky enough to do that. And I'll be at them all this year, in fact. <laughs> Apparently, Epic TV has a jet now. This is news to me. And if there is one, frankly, I've been let down. Way too many economy flights. I could have been flying in a jet. <laughs> the imagery I've got going on now. Well, we're waiting for Sean to try to find Stasher, try to find Sam. The audience staying put. There is an after party going on here. So if you're in the area, I'm not sure if you can sneak in now. They've been pretty strict on letting people in. I've got my double stamps. Maybe if you're in the area, you're listening to this live stream, you come down for a party, come and see these athletes, come and say hello. A lot of people enjoying the competition. Triphobic, really good comp, thank you. And whoever let the lighting designer go nuts on this, I'm a fan. It is a bit screen savory, but I like it. Got a water ripple effect, very relaxing. I kind of need to pee, but that's fine. <laughs> the things I can't say during an IFSC comp. Someone's trying, Boulder. I've got a stasher on. Was that a stasher? It might be a stasher in the background there. Lovely way to kick off our season. And as I mentioned, we've got big comps coming up. Great to see Dot Masters take this position in the sort of competition circuit. I remember when Dot Masters first started off and it had to build itself up, and of course, Corona really put paid to so much. I've got multiple emails saying, Matt, can you come? Oh, it's cancelled. Oh, it's cancelled again. It, it was a shame to see it go. So thank you to everyone for working so hard to get it back into the schedule. <laughs> Eric Elsewhere says, I was in the audience but had this live stream in my ears for the additional info. <laughs> Right, ladies and gentlemen, we found Sean McCall. I think we're almost ready. And we're going to head down to the front of the stage where Sean McCall is. Here right, he is. Guys, here. I think we're live. We're here on the mat. I'm here with Stasha, our female winner. I'm going to ask her a few questions. The first question is going to be, no one did the second boulder. <laughs> Were you stressed when you couldn't do it? And what was going through your mind when you had to leave the boulder and you were leaving that, uh, I guess, undone? I guess I kind of knew that nobody did it. So I wasn't that stressed. I was like, ah, oh, it's fine, you know? But I was close to cheat it. I reached it in the last moment and then I wanted to turn my hand to push. But I was so stretched out <laughs> using my height till the end that I lost balance when I started turning my hand because it was a super weird position. And even like before going up, I couldn't turn my hand around somehow. It was so uncomfortable. And then I just lost it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It was just so weird. <laughs> yeah, we saw that. And uh, Alana also fell on the last move, had her foot and was trying to do the press, but uh, yeah, both really close. Was, press was really not as straightforward um, in the feeling sense. Like, sure, you see we have to do a press, but it doesn't fall on its place as you think it would. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right, the next question is, uh, on the last boulder, uh, Alana did it before you, putting pressure on you to do it. Yeah. <laughs> did you know it? Did you know how many tries you had? And obviously you knew you had to do it to secure the win. I didn't know how many tries I had. I heard by the crowd that Alana did it. Um, so, and then I also heard some other people doing it, so I thought, okay, I can do this. I've done these swing moves a million times this winter. It's really like a trending move of the winter period. And I just needed to remember exactly where the crimp is and not miss it. So I made sure to visualize the move a hundred times before I went out. And it just felt so perfect. It was just there. And the rest... I thought the top I would have to like jump and catch the heel and go up, but the holes were just so good and the top was not as flat, so it was pretty easy till the top. Yeah, oh, that's nice. Well, congratulations, three flashes. Uh, 
I guess the last thoughts is, uh, what was your favorite boulder of the round? Uh, <laughs> um, not the creepy one and not the red one, <laughs> definitely. So probably the last one. Um, actually, let's say it's this white here, because there was such an interesting move there, or I don't know how others did it, but... Very similar. This, like, movement where you have to move out of your stable position, be slightly unstable for a second. If you stay there, you fall. And at that moment, kick your foot, push and jump and grab the hold. Yes. And this is just such fine tuning. I loved it. <laughs> oh, good. Amazing job and congratulations. Thanks, John. All right, we are going to grab the male winner, Sam. All right, Sam, uh, a win here. Now, i uh, ask you a question. Let's see. Uh, you were the only competitor to do... Wait, I should ask you. Is it okay if we do it in English? I also speak French, so if you want to answer in French, uh, we'll figure it out. You were the only competitor to do the first three boulders. Did you know going into the fourth boulder that you had already won? And how did it feel? Yes, uh, I already knew it, but uh, I wanted to, to keep it as, a, as training, the last boulder for, for when you're under pressure. Uh, I think it was very good, yeah. Oh, that's good. It's kind of what I thought, too, because I was like, well, if he knows, you're not just going to stand there, but obviously you try. And I guess the next question would be, out of the even four boulders, because you were super close to getting that last boulder, what, which one was your favorite and why? My favorite, um, I think it, it would be the first one. Uh, there were some, some very good moves and, yes, good moves, good good holds, trims, uh, everything I like was perfect. Congratulations, obviously you came off your podium finish at the French Nationals. A win here. Uh, are we going to see you on the World Cup circuit this year? Yes, yes, I'm going to do um, uh, almost everything uh, on the World Cups. Yeah. Perfect. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. I think we'll go back up to you, Matt, and we will get ready for the podiums. Well, thank you to Sean there. For getting those interviews done, we're almost time to sign off it. And while Sean comes up, once again, I'm going to shout out our sponsors, NKBV, the co-organizer, Las Motiva, our main sponsor here today, Axis, Unit Hold, Unleash Climbing, Ibex Holds, Virgin Grip, Xcult, Contact, Elevation Climbing, Fabricio Fibric, Climb Lab, The Circuit Climbing, App Climbing, and I've never pronounced this correctly, I do apologize, <laughs> Bizonda Buten for making up our final sponsors. Well, I think Sean is gonna come and say goodbye. He is gonna come and say goodbye and then we'll leave you to the capable hands of our MC. Sean, lovely interview there. Both of them super happy to be winning, obviously. It's funny, uh, I, uh, I, always, I don't really know what to ask, but I know that sometimes when I get interviewed, I want, to, like, I want them to ask a question where I actually have to think about it. And so, yeah, it was interesting, and I, I think they both appreciate the questions, but it was really fun. Brilliant interview. Well, we're going to sign off now and let our winners get their well-deserved adulation. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Matt Groom. This is Sean McCall in the commentary box. Thank you, everyone at home, for joining us in the comments, and we will see you, hopefully, next year. Yeah, thank you so much, and yeah, thanks for doing this. It was, it was a blast. I hope we do it again. All right, everyone, that's it from us. See you later. Enjoy the end of the competition. Well earned. Yep, give him one. And then on the first place, from France, in a fantastic last boulder, Sam Avizu! Yep. And once more with feeling. Congratulations. Doc Masters 2023. We see our winners here. All different nationalities, great to see. Thank you. And now, on to the women. Are you ready? On. Ja, natuurlijk gewoon in de Nederlands op de derde plek, Lisa Klein! Van harte.
hartstikke gefeliciteerd. Ja, daar nemen we gewoon de tijd voor. Ja, dat mag, ja, dat is gewoon verdiend. Ja, dus, hij gaat uh... er gewoon even door. Kom op, Melissa! Ja, daar zijn we gewoon een beetje trots op. Zeker, Nederlandse trots. En dan gaan we door. On the second place, all the way from Canada, Alana Yip! Great performance. And on the first place, ladies and gents, from Dog Masters Finals 2023, Stasha Gayo. Yeah, ladies and gents, please give it up for these three women. And we would like to invite the men's as well to enter the stage for a photo. And the numbers four, five and six as well, join us on stage. Are you here, four, five, six? Come on, all the athletes, you deserve to be here. Yes, this is a really nice moment. Champagne. Here we go. Just shake some more. Just shake some. Yes. Thank you for the show. Yeah, drink some. Drink some.